It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another worldwide transmission. It is Wednesday, the 12th day of June 2013. And I really want to give the listeners and viewers uh, of this broadcast a chance to sound off on all the things that have been unfolding from our coverage, from our coverage uh, of the globalist uh, and the different uh, activities that they've been involved in. Uh, at uh, Bilderberg to the demonization by the Republican and Democratic parties of Snowden leaking uh, the fact that the NSA is spying on every man, woman, and child. We already knew that. They're already using them to spy and harass on the press, talking to whistleblowers that are exposing government criminal activity. They went after ATF people that blew the whistle on them shipping guns into Mexico so they could blame the Second Amendment. And now they're trying to say this guy's a Chinese spy or something. What about people being globalist spies, globalist corporate operatives in our government robbing the Treasury and robbing us of our Bill of Rights and Constitution? And then you've got the illegal uh, immigration uh, reform bill, which is written like Obamacare where it has some nice sounding words in it, but then it's just a blank check for government to do whatever it wants. And, and the globalists want a North American union to drive down wages, not to raise Mexican wages, but to drive down wages. And Mexico doesn't have to open its borders to Guatemala. You get six months hard, hard labor if you're an illegal, they catch you there. And Schumer is quoted as saying, illegal immigration will be a thing of the past. You go up to DrudgeReport.com, it's got a powerful uh, image of a uh, Los Zetas with Obama tattooed on his stomach. This is the type of amazing stuff that's going on. And folks, I've been to Mexico probably, let's not exaggerate, 30, 40 times. And there's a lot of neat stuff about Mexico, but there's also a lot of horrible things about it. It's one of the most dangerous countries in the world. And... The Southwest uh, is just collapsing into third worldum. And that's exactly what the system wants. Meanwhile, Rand Paul says to illegals, we will find you a place. We will try to get a good bill to legalize legal, lawful people that have been here. And Because if you're legal, it takes you 10, 15, 20 years, 10 years to get here, and then 10 years to become a citizen. It's too hard for people to law-abidingly uh, become a citizen. Because the system doesn't want you to go that route. They want you to go the illegal route so you can have multiple identities and further bankrupt the country. It's all been actuaried out. Your taxpayer money goes to fund the illegals with all the welfare and stuff as a corporate incentive, as a corporate welfare to bring in a group that will work for less than you can live on. Meanwhile, Senator Tim Kaine speaks in Spanish on the Senate floor, pushes immigration bill. I wonder what happened in Mexico if somebody went down there and, and spoke in their Congress in English and said, let's legalize any Americans that want to come here. Let's give them free health care. Let them have their babies here and pay for it. And I mean, they would, they would laugh you out of the place. And if you said, be loving, don't be mean to the Americano, you'd probably get shot. Because Mexico, for all its failures, is at least nationalistic. America has had its immune system politically completely dropped where we will put up with anything. Meanwhile, Snowden's put out a new statement saying he's not hiding. More explosive details on U.S. surveillance targets. His plans for the immediate future. Steps up claims the U.S. has taken uh, since he uh, broke cover in Hong Kong. Folks, I don't need to believe Snowden. Uh, this stuff's actually all public. What he's saying is not hardcore enough. It's about, let's, be, let's not exaggerate, 10 times worse than what he's saying.
Stay with us. Big transmission coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday, the 12th day of June 2013. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We'll be live here for the next three hours. Uh, I do have a big uh, whistleblower uh, coming on the broadcast uh, tonight to talk about a host of issues on the nightly news. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. And we have another whistleblower from inside Big Telecom who put in the snooping systems coming back. We actually have two whistleblowers from industry and uh, the Pentagon uh, coming on the transmission tonight, InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock Central. I'm going to tape the interviews before. Sometimes the show's live. Tonight it'll be taped. And then tomorrow we should have excerpts uh, on the radio show for you. Before I get into the latest on the NSA scandal, the IRS scandal, Benghazi Gate, before I get into all of it, I had a realization this morning when I woke up at about 4 a.m., because I'm still kind of on London time, hours ahead of us, just getting back from London uh, Monday, covering Bilderberg, I had the realization that they now have media matters who doesn't matter to the public, but it does matter because it's White House funded, White House run, White House transition chief, George Soros funded. They spend more time attacking Infowars.com and this radio show and yours truly, Alex Jones, than they do on anybody else now. Matt Drudge, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's Alex Jones and also Rand Paul and Ted Cruz. Because, you know, that shows you who they're really scared of. So, some weeks they attack Drudge as much as they attack us, in fact, more. But, but lately it's been, it's been yours truly. And that is directly run by the White House. And they're attacking us because they know we know what we're talking about. And then when they had Bloomberg, because I reread that article this morning, when they had Bloomberg come out and in a big feature story and call it an investigative report and say Alex Jones basically caused the Boston bombing and they had the quote by the Southern Poverty Slime Center who actually has been caught in court with one of their guys shooting up the, what was the Family Research Council and saying he did it because of them. So, so they've actually been caught in all that. They, they, they are then quoted as experts in there saying Alex Jones doesn't build bombs. He builds bombers. And I was on Eric Mancal Muller's show. By the way, he's got a new big uh, history show coming out. So congratulations to him. That's actually a big show with his brother. The point is, is I was on there and he said, why are they saying this about you? Everybody knows that you're against offensive violence and that you expose b bombings as many times being government funded to take our liberties. And then he went on to apologize basically on air and, and say, I, I thought you were cooked 10 years ago when I first started interviewing you. It's all come true. I apologize. And you better watch your back when they're doing stuff like this. And it was funny. He brought that up and said it. Because I was already thinking that this morning, and then I'm on his show. And he was talking about it. He was saying the same thing I was already, already thinking. He's, he's a really smart guy. I mean, they would not be coming out. I really thought about it this morning. I woke up and I thought about it for a couple of hours. There in the dark of the house before the kids and my wife woke up. Sitting there reading that article and, and thinking about it. And then and looking at all the other demonization pieces and everything. And what popped out of my little computer, what popped out of my brain, and like the old data cards, was Danger Will Robinson. They would not come out and say that I'm connected to bombers and that I make bombers. Which, even though I'm a public figure, I, I could, uh, I could probably, if I really wanted to fight the case and do it right and file in the right district and everything, I, I could get a judgment against Bloomberg. We got a judgment against uh, Pittsburgh, one of my reporters. 
or they settled. I mean, I know the law pretty darn well. I made a study of it. It's very interesting. And uh, they would not be risking things like that. There it is, human bombs. He does not build bombs. He builds bombers. They set it up on screen. And, and, and it's not just some of them quoting him. They say that over and over again in the article. And, and basically say the bombers did it because they were my listeners when they've killed two FBI agents that were on the scene. There was a drill. They've now killed one of the witnesses that was talking to his friends. I mean, I've been contacted by lawyers and family members and everything else off record. And I've told them, okay, if you want to go public here, that's fine. And, all, and they're all being surveilled. The system is really afraid of the fact that we really caught them staging the London bombing. Those two brothers were total patsies. They were both on CIA payroll. That's come out in the foreign press. It's been, uh, it's been confirmed. Boston bombing. Boston bombing. What bombing did I say? London bombing. Well, that too was carried out by MI6, and they had drills of targeting the same buses and the same trains at the very exact same time. And then I was approached by police, MI5, security people all over London saying, oh, we all know the truth. We all know, uh, you know that that was staged. It, it just makes the head spin that they're coming after us because we freaked them out by catching them with their pants down in a drill with patsies who were on CIA payroll on record being sent to the caucuses to go around and basically radicalize and create Al-Qaeda cells to attack Russian-held areas. As is an admitted publicly funded program. And they do not like the fact that I'm sitting here covering the things they're doing because they want to pull off more bombings to, to basically phase in martial law. They want to uh, stage bombings to blame the Tea Party. They want this. I, I know their mind. I eat, drink, and sleep this. I know the history. I know how Operation Gladio worked. Listen, in India, in Italy, in Germany, in England, in all these places, they can't even stage bombings anymore because it's come out that almost every IRA bombing for 40 years was MI6, MI5, SAS commandos. That's London Guardian, Times of London. I mean, that's admitted. You tell Brits that there, they don't laugh at you. They go, well, I know. You know, operation, you know, operative steak knife and all the rest of it. By the way, I interviewed steak knife. And then he was dead a month later. You know how many people I've interviewed, like the Boston madam and steak knife, who they kill? I mean, I can't believe I'm still alive. It, it just hit me. that I mean, I am fearless. But it hit me, the reason I'm so angry is my flesh, my worldly side, is extremely angry at me. I was psychoanalyzing this morning why I don't like myself, why I'm so angry, why I'm so focused, why I'm so serious now. When I used to be a really funny, happy person. And it just comes down to the realization that it's all real, it's worse than I even thought, and I'm right in the middle of it. And the people that want to do this type of stuff, to be technical, Steak Knife was kind of a name for uh, several people in an operation. But I had an Army commando on who blew the whistle and admitted it all, admitted to bombings and things. He'd been in one newspaper. He, it turned out he was a listener. He contacted us. I got him on. He was dead a month later. I interviewed another whistleblower over in Engle, uh, England, and he got machine gunned off his motorcycle. That's why when I got approached by police and then by MI5, these guys were sitting there going, look, we all know it's true. We know you're right, and, and you, know, you better be safe, and, and, and you know, we wish we could change things. It's because they all know, folks. And that's why I, I could go to England, and I could have... Police, MI5, and others come to me and say, members of Bilderberg are going to go public. They're completely freaked out. You guys are doing a great job. And basically, you know, we support what you're doing. Because you see, MI5, they know how many of those guys in there are child molesters. 
You know, the average person in the government is not a criminal. And now they're all having a crisis of conscience. That's why you're going to see more and more whistleblowers coming out. I mean, who do you think wants total power and to do evil things? Really bad people. That's history. And it's a, it's a collection of different types of criminals. But I just had the realization that we really are having a huge effect and that we are, I am, in danger. Because my gut is always right, and my gut has never told me that I am on the edge of the precipice, like my gut has told me. And my gut's never told me that I'm doing a good job like it's telling me. So, you know, I've got one side of me, the side that leans towards God and creation and everything that's good, is saying, well done. You're going to get a good report. But my flesh is like, why don't you enjoy yourself? Why don't you slow down? Why don't you go along with the system a little? You don't need to destroy yourself. Do you know what my soul says? Full speed ahead. Intensify. Accelerate to ramming speed. And that's the decision I'm making. It's like I told you a year ago. We're taking the info war to the next level. Now I'm taking it to the next level. You've been noticing there must be that Al Franken, the scumbag authoritarian filth, the degenerate lover of death, Bill Maher, who says more abortion, more car wrecks, more death, because humans are scum, get rid of us, less people, but ban the guns for the children, because he cares if people die, but kill granny for, so he can get more money. Uh, but he loves you. Bill Maher, all of them have come out in defense of Obama, and warrantless across the board, spying against the Associated Press, the media, Fast and Furious, government whistleblowers. How many times have I had NSA insiders like Seabell Edmonds on to tell you the NSA is really aimed at whistleblowers? In fact, let's get Wayne Madsen back on. Wayne Madsen, NSA whistleblower, when he left decades ago. Journalist, syndicated columnist. He, he said that Obama shifted even more than Bush to taking like a third of the NSA, to paraphrase him, he said a large portion of it, to just focus on the press and just focus on their opposition for dirty tricks. And he said that like three years ago. I was just thinking about, you know, I said, our sources said this, and I'm thinking, why did I know that? Well, because it's come out, but also I know the details from people that said it beforehand. And then I start thinking, who told me that? Colonel Schaefer, who's coming on tomorrow. Um, big whistleblower. Uh, Seabell Edmonds, NSA, uh, FBI translator. Uh, NSA, high level, I mean, really a commander, I mean, he, 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 a division chief of a whole sector, uh, Wayne Madsen. I mean, we know all this, but I don't just believe my sources. I separately have studied the funding and the infrastructure. And the globalists love to brag, so so much of it is public, so we know how big it is. And now you see Boner, a.k.a. Boehner, uh, you see Chucky Schumer, you see them all coming out bipartisan treason and saying, this man Snowden, he's a traitor. And the only way Snowden is a traitor, Edward Snowden, is if it's an elaborate hoax with all the NSA stuff already out to make it come out that he is a Chinese or Russian spy, to make it look traitorous to expose this. And watching, you know, what he said and, and looking at him in his history, he doesn't fit the MO of that. Because the revelations would have been smaller if, if, if it, my gut tells me Snowden is for real. Let me tell you who a traitor is, is Boehner. Uh, it turns out Congress and Ron... Ron Paul and Rand Paul have both talked about this now, has been briefed. They were given national security gag orders that I don't believe are constitutional. I mean, the Congress and the Intelligence Committee, they're in charge of all this. And, and, and you know, to, to allow the NSA and the Pentagon to dictate to them is the cart before the horse. And, and really, it's an excuse to go along with all this.
I mean, it's come out that the cloakroom was being tapped. And I even predicted, oh, they'll claim it's Democratic operatives or private corporations doing it because 99% of the spying now, literally, is done by 800,000 private contractors. Look at Snowden. He was working for a big private group. What, Booz Allen? So that's the issue here, is they're spying on each other. I mean, it came out a few years ago that MI6 and MI5 were spying on the parliament, on the elected government, to be able to have the bureaucracy head them off at the pass. What's happening is the bureaucracy is completely taking over, and the bureaucracy isn't even a government bureaucracy. It's a private corporate bureaucracy. Uh, I was reading where one spy firm just in cybersecurity last month got a $10 billion contract for 2014. One company just on spying on us, $10 billion. I mean, you go to these NSA bases, and entire wings are run by different defense contractors. A lot of them are foreign companies. But, oh, they're always, do what we say, let us spy on you. We're fighting against the Russians and the Chinese. If we weren't here, they would get you. They would get me? The globalists have already moved all our jobs to China. The globalists are in bed with the communist Chinese because they're authoritarians, like them. So when we come back, I'm going to get to some of these clips with Ron Paul, Rand Paul, and others. But we're going to get Wayne Madsen on today, if not tomorrow. He is on today. We were working on it earlier. He is on today. One o'clock. So in an hour and 30 minutes, T-minus. I'm going to have him really get into NSA. I mean, he is the expert on this. And then I've got bombshell whistleblowers on tonight, 7 o'clock central. I've absolutely got to get into all this news. I mean, Obama outside of Congress is putting with an executive order. It's not even an executive order, it's just an executive directive uh, added on to microwave uh, oven uh, regulations, boosting the price of carbon in the United States that's paid into carbon trading funds that he and the pig piece of garbage, death camp owning in China, uh, slave camp owning in China, Al Gore, you, you will have to pay money into them. I mean, it's a totally criminal conflict of interest waddling around in front of us with the general public in a coma. That's why I get so angry at these people. They are just the most disgusting authoritarian scumbag criminals. And you've got all these camp followers, so-called liberals that are really authoritarians who feel like they're part of a gang who will salute and support Drone killing, torture, funding Al-Qaeda, spying on us, warrantless checkpoints, government arming to the teeth against the people. And as long as they feel like they're winners and are part of the establishment, they're for it. So we're going to get into uh, all of that. I'm going to get into the whistleblowing uh, on the NSA in detail. Uh, we're going to open the phones up and take your calls. Wayne Madsen's going to join us. Uh, just briefly, uh, we sold out the last edition of InfoWars magazine. Uh, most editions sell out. This one will probably sell out. It's the Elite Plan Global Takeover. Welcome to Bilderberg. Uh, big, glossy color magazine. Great way to wake up friends and family. You can sign up for a 12-month subscription and give it as a gift. Shipping is included in the subscription price. 12 big, thick color magazines to wake people up full of graphics and factoids and graphs. Great way to wake people up with a gift subscription to your library, your police department, your congressman or woman, your state rep. Uh, great thing to give to your church uh, as a gift subscription. Great thing to leave at the dentist office or the barber shop. You can also buy each particular issue in groups of 10 up to 100 at cost. People really pay attention nowadays to print because there's so little of it and the quality of it's so bad. This is so high. Got a big graphic with a map of the Bilderberg Group with a skull in the middle. Uh, very, very powerful. So InfoWars June issue available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free 
888-258-8888-253-3139. You can also get 10% off on all of the ProPure water filtration systems by only calling the toll-free number until tonight. You can still get that 15% off because some of you called and said you forgot to do it. 15% off the already lowest prices on all the stainless steel gravity-fed filters, the Pro One stuff that cuts out the fluoride, all of it, replacement filters, you name it. 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139 to call and get that 50% off or get a subscription or whatever you want. Uh, but at the same time, you can still get 10% off at InfoWarsStore.com. That's special uh, in perpetuity right now. Uh, into the foreseeable future. So InfoWarsStore.com, get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership, and you see the nightly news, the higher quality archives of the daytime show, the commercial-free podcast, all my films, my book, Paul Watson's book, dozens and dozens of other films, um, 18 years of material, up and running, 11 years, PrisonPlanet.tv, one membership is five ninety five a month, and it's really 11 memberships, so less than 55 cents per person per month. A uh, great way to wake people up. If you have a membership and you're not sharing it, be sure and share your username and passcode with friends and family today and encourage them to watch the nightly news, especially tonight with these whistleblowers, prisonplanet.tv. Not even the word whistleblower, because the, these people are coming on and just talking about on record what's going on. So, as I forgot, one guy doesn't want to be called that. He's just getting into what is a citizen, is on record, and what he can talk about. Uh, but... Uh, you, you notice when we have big whistleblowers, though, you never hear about it. Because they just hope nobody picks up on it. But more and more people are. Uh, oh, and finally, we have the best vitamins, minerals, trace elements, uh, cofactors, the very best products out there across the board uh, for weight control, for health, for longevity. Uh, almost 400 products there, all discounted at InfoWars Health. Dot com, InfoWarsHealth.com, a bunch of videos and, and, and audios with top experts and others. You can also call 888-789-9277. you've got any questions or want to sign up for free shipping and, and, and ask about auto ship, 888-789-9277. The lowest prices on all longevity products at InfoWarsHealth.com. And if you want to sign up and pay 10 bucks to be a distributor or to join the InfoWars team, you can go to InfoWarsTeam.com. And there's also a phone number there at InfoWarsTeam.com. But this broadcast is listener-supported. Uh, and please, in closing, also support all of our AM and FM affiliates by being a local sponsor uh, or supporting the local sponsors and letting them know that you are supporting the broadcast. And as always, spread the word about the broadcast. That is most important, and pray for us. Okay, uh, that's some mid-air refueling, as I call it, to fund our media operation. We're not funded by George Soros or the White House like MSNBC or Media Matters. Uh, or Bloomberg, funded by all their insider knowledge and uh, all of his uh, activities with his 15 bodyguards, but doesn't want you to be able to own a gun. Uh, he writes yellow journalism pieces about how, quote, I don't build bombs, I build bombers. I guess if somebody comes up and punches you in the nose and then you decide to defend yourself, you're a bad guy. Or if somebody says, hey, it's not right to bully someone, uh, you're inciting them to bomb. No, I'm not. I'm inciting people to wake up and take our country back, and that's why you're scared of me. That's why you're scared. And you know what, New World Order, I've studied history, so have you. You should be scared. You should be scared of all the crimes you've committed and the insanity of thinking that you could ever, ever in a million years get away with what you've done. Let me give the number out, and then I'm going to get into the news. Let me ask you this question. Do you think, uh, to use the cliche, that Mr. Edward Snowden, the CIA surveillance tech, and then, again, most of it, over 99% of it, from what I've seen, the funding at least now, is done by private contractors. The huge cash cow of how he pointed out any analyst can get into your bank account, listen to your phone, you name it. Yeah, I've talked to FBI agents, and that was like seven, eight years ago, I talked to an FBI agent. And then I talked to some federal marshals, a senior one, talked to a whole group of them. And, and now I think about, wow, people get arrested for this now. I mean, I'm on air saying things that they might be bold enough to say, take that man away. <clears throat> but I remember having you know, a particular FBI agent tell me, Alex, you're absolutely right. I don't know how you know all this stuff, but the local police don't know it. 
But we, the systems that are at the threat fusion centers waiting to be turned on can type in your social security number and it will pull up your known group of cell phones and then we can hit a button and listen to what you're doing. We can kill your car with the OnStar and listen to you. We can turn your phone on even when it's off. And he goes, but I guess you know all that. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's in the Telecommunications Act, the money, the infrastructure for it. And I've, I was visited by a telecommunications whistleblower uh, come to me in 1997. In fact, I had a whole bunch of them. I had a, a whistleblower from Time Warner come to me about the digital cable boxes, an engineer with a degree, an engineering degree from a prestigious university, you know, one of the head engineers for Time Warner here locally. Uh, I had a telecommunications engineer from a big phone company come to me. And, man, I didn't know what I was reading. It was specs and boxes. They just said, whatever you do, shred that or burn that. I threw it in a dumpster when you're done, okay? And, I mean, these, and, and these are like engineers with the pocket protectors, you know, like gray-haired guys sweating in parking lots. And, and you know, you're, you're, you're 24 years old. You're 25 years old. And you're like, you know, you go to the library, you go online, you find the con confirmations of what they're telling you. And that's why all of you listening go, yeah, you did say 17 years ago, 16 years ago, 10 years ago, everything that's now come out. Because there were, I had whistleblowers. There was nobody on air talking about this stuff. Let me tell you, when I had that, when I talked to that Time Warner guy, and I said, there's microphones listening to you two-way, and they're tracking what you watch in psychological profiles. And, the, and, and I mean, I got death threats over that. I got in the face of a federal judge over a fake trial he was having, and they sent people to beat me up and to tell me to shut up while they were punching me in the face. Of course, I went completely ape hillbilly on them, and they didn't like what happened, but I, I gave a lot better than they gave. <laughs> but the point is... Is that, is that, let me tell you, this country, I've lived this, ladies and gentlemen. I have lived this. Where engineers are sitting there at Time Warner Cable in Austin with two-way cable with government boxes. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, we are the NSA. There's whole floors, all everything. The microphones are in it. They're listening. I can watch the data. I've got to run it. It all feeds into them. We're paid because sometimes they get late paying. And it's even my job to try to do billing. That, that Time Warner whistleblower was like in 1997. And then what happens is you get one whistleblower and then more whistleblowers come. And I mean, I was just a kid, folks. And I'd get a call. This is Thomas Sanchez, the head of emergency management uh, in Kingsville County. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like you to come down here. I'd like to meet with you. I, I, I Delta Force has come and offered me money and offered the most of the commissioners have taken money in the county and, uh, and they're preparing for martial law. They say it's a psychological testing program and I was in intelligence uh, in Vietnam and this is unpatriotic and, and you talk about this so I, I want to come on your show. He came on. Then uh, the San Antonio police chief would do an interview if you called him. And I go down and the San Antonio police chief tells me the same thing. People say, oh, if this was going on, people would blow the whistle. They do blow the whistle. They do. And then nobody did anything. Nobody stopped it. Nobody reversed it. Nobody tried to turn the, the pendulum back. And now, folks, the word from people I know high up in banking, I know through a connection, the president, not the CEO, not the chairman, but the president of one of the big six banks. That there is no way to fix the derivatives. They did it by design. It's going to collapse, and they are going to take everyone's bank accounts. I've been telling you that for over a decade, and now they're getting ready to do it. They want you to be completely bankrupted. They want complete control. They're all exempt from the taxes. They're a mafia, ladies and gentlemen, that makes other mafias pale in significance. So I want to get your take as an audience. How could anyone call the prism leaker Edward Snowden a traitor?
The people that have allowed this to go on, they're the traitors. I would tell you in 97 that your digital cable box was, was listening to you and recording everything in your house. Now it's all public. That your TiVo and your Scientific Atlantic box and your, and, and, and your Connect, now the Connect fires wireless internet, one of the models, through your house, through walls, and I've even seen the demonstrations, you can pull them up online, and it shows you walking around in your house, but two, two rooms over, and it can listen to you through your house. It has audio, it has face scanning, it has wireless redirected out, scanning through your walls. It makes a smart meter look primitive, and it's sitting there data scanning you, made by a eugenicist, made by a globalist, who publicly has said he wants to reduce world population massively. And young people are paying money to bring this robot into your house. Yeah, there it is. Uh, what university is that? University of Washington. Wi-Fi signals enable uh, gesture recognition throughout entire home. See how they roll it out like a service? Oh, yeah, you'll be able to have hands-free anywhere in the house. You'll just do an A in the air, and it'll recognize that gesture and do an A. You know, let's say your passcode is ANT. You'll just go A-N-T and see that all sounds great, except it's two-way. It's an NSA global kill robot. This is what you want. This is what you get. And, and, and I mean, these are not nice people that want to spy on everyone like angels to end all war and end all problems. They want you dead. I was on ManCal this morning. Uh, he's actually taping it for tomorrow. He's live a lot, but he tapes some segments for the next day. He was taping it for tomorrow to be technical. People are like, I listened to ManCal. You weren't on there. I've heard that before. It's on, it's on tomorrow. And, and he was asking, what's at the bottom of the rabbit hole? And I go, well, they're killing us all with cancer, viruses, SV40, and others, the vaccines, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, and, and it just hits me that this is real. I'm telling the truth. This is happening. And I really should be a self-preservation coward. And I should really just either go along with this or I should just get out of the country and try to go hide. But when you realize it is a master total takeover plan against all of humanity and you think about all the innocent children, I mean, I can hardly be in the room now with my innocent good children because it's something beyond rage now when I think about how innocent and good they are and I think about how evil the globalists are, that they would commit crimes of this magnitude against humanity and be putting all this stuff in the vaccines on purpose and trying to shovel GMO on kids to hurt little sweet children. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's beyond rage. I can't look at Dianne Feinstein. I can't look at Obama. I can't look at Boehner. I can't look at any of these people anymore. They are just scum. And they're all in on it. Let me give you a newsflash. At Speaker of the House level or at presidential level, they're in on the club. You know what's going on at Bilderberg? Life extension discussions and how to keep it from the public. And what did Ken Clark, number three in the British government, say? What did Balls say when they gave statements? They said, we discussed the European Union and global governance, and we discussed new medical uh, advances. They get these wild looks in their eyes. These pigs think they're going to take the whole world over for themselves and damn us off from the future. And I'm not going to sit around and put up with it. What about you? There are things worse than death and turning innocence over. Anytime I have the shadow of the, the inkling of fear in the back of my mind. It's not even that. It, it's more it, it's self-centeredness, wanting to see the world, wanting to enjoy beauty, wanting to spend time. Anytime I have a selfish thought about my life and, and, and you know, being killed or demonized or any of it, I just think about all the kids. These people have got cornered right now in slave camps, in sex slavery camps, the ones they're killing with vaccines, all of it. I just think about all those kids they've got and they're hurting right now, and all I want to do is get the New World Order off of them. Bunch of hyenas tearing kids apart, and all I can think about is charging in and dealing with these people. But I need your help doing that. 800-259-9231. Is Snowden a hero? 
or a zero. 800-259-9231. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We're here live. By the way, uh, the NSA was listening to everything pre-9-11. And Sybil Edmonds was working for the FBI on NSA intercepts. And she's broken her gag order. She told Congress all of this, and it, most of it's come out separately confirming what she said. She said they were running drugs, guns, al-Qaeda, commanding Osama bin Laden. They were listening to the CIA command bin Laden and command the hijackers in what they thought was a drill. And they were running white slaves. And I always get idiots sending me emails saying, well, don't you care about black slavery? White slavery means sex slaves, folks, for new listeners. I mean, she's on record. I'm going to explain to you again. They're not spying on you to keep you safe. They're spying on you to make sure they can snatch kids out of your backyard and get away with it. Okay. All right, good. Just They don't just chase the pages around at the Capitol. They don't. They don't just, uh, you know, have all these diplomats getting caught with 10-year-old girls. No, no, uh, th that's, that's kind of light stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, the, you don't get in the higher echelons unless you like to club little kids' heads in. And, and you know, I'm sorry if you want to hear all this. They already say babies that aren't born aren't humans. They killed 53 million of them so far. And by illustrating that they're doing it, we can stop it. By going, you know that nine-month-old baby? That you're uh, strangling or throwing in the toilet to drown, that's murder, and you're going to jail. How dare you, extremist? No, I'm not an extremist. I have a heart. Other people are going to join me, and we're going to have grand juries indict you, and we're going to put you under the jail. How's that sound, New World Order? How's that sound? See, we know who you are, and I'm aware of what you're doing, and I see you, and I'm going to make sure everybody else sees you, and we're going to get our hands legally and lawfully through the court system when we take this country back around your throat with a rope. And there's going to be rejoicing when your necks snap at the end of that thing. So you better do everything. Go ahead, come after me, whatever you're going to do. I'm coming for you. You understand that, murderers? I'm coming for you. I know who you are, putting cancer viruses in the vaccines. This is the reality, folks. We beat them by being hardcore. We beat them by going all the way and saying who they really are. We don't beat them by eating around the edges. We don't beat them by, oh, why are you targeting the Tea Party? Why are you targeting the press? We beat them by blowing the whistle. We beat them by going all the way. We beat them by standing up to them. We beat them by seeing what they're doing. Let's go to a quick clip of Ron Paul. Quick clip of uh, Ron Paul talking about how he hopes that the government doesn't send a drone to kill Snowden. No, they won't do that. They'll throw a bag over his head, take him and torture him for a couple months, and then promise to kill his family if he doesn't come out and say he was a Chinese spy. That's what they'll do. Let's go to the tape. Where do you think he is right now? Are you worried about that? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I'm worried about somebody in our government might kill him with a, with a cruise missile or a drone missile. I mean, we live in a bad time where... Uh, American citizens don't even have rights and that they can be killed. But the, the gentleman is, is trying to tell the truth about what's going on. He's not defecting. There's no signs of that happening. It's a shame that we're in an age where people who tell the truth about what the government's doing gets into trouble. And then Rand Paul has come out and, and, and said, well, yeah, Congress was brief. We were given gag orders. But at least he's saying arrest the people that are illegally doing all this. Yes, arrest them. I mean, you take one look at Hayden. You take one look at all these people. I mean, these are sickos in blue suits. I mean, I am not bowing down to these people anymore, folks. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we are now into our number two. I'm gonna be taking your phone calls. I got a bunch of audio clips. We're going to be getting into Obama's going ahead with carbon taxes outside of Congress uh, that are paid directly to him and Al Gore and others. It's just unbelievably uh, outrageous. Uh, that's being reported by Bloomberg, who, of course, has been promoting it and is, must be very happy. Obama quietly raises carbon prices, cost to climate increase. <laughs> Look how Bloomberg reports it like if there's a storm. It's because you didn't pay uh, Bloomberg or Al Gore 
uh, that pig Obama money. Uh, by, by pig, just like up there, even act like they're communists. They're not even communists. There's these globalist kleptocrats who walk around annihilating all businesses they don't own. It's just disgusting, disgusting filth. Uh, continuing here, DHS-funded exercise portrays free American citizens as terrorist cell. This is our top story today, and I get so wound up on the, you know, the other news I got into. I didn't cover this in the first hour. This is our top story this is huge. This is big. And I want to also ask the crew in there, I want you to go into this article and print me the Boston Globe that came with it. It's at the bottom of the second paragraph, so you can show people it's in the Boston Globe. Uh, a couple months before the bombing, uh, they were going to have a drill where the Tea Party uh, bombs the public on a public street in Boston with uh, backpack bombs. <laughs> Oh, boy, and that way if any of their operatives get caught doing it, they just say, oh, it's part of the drill. Then that worked like Sweden. And, of course, they were a few days after going to blame the Tea Party. They said it's a Tea Partier. They've got him. He's at the courthouse. They're going to release the news. And then, the, thank God, we got photos of the drill and all the rest of it and the witnesses. And then they had to back off and, I guess, burn some of their – they always have backup groups to burn. That's why the brothers were out partying and having a great time. They thought, hey, we're in the CIA. This is awesome. You know, they were in the CIA. They were funded. They were operatives. They were idiots. They were, uh, I mean, according to the CIA, they were useful idiots. Uh, and they were set up. There's, there's no doubting that. And they're killing all the witnesses uh, around them. But I'm crazy to look at that. I'm, I'm nuts. But that's not even the angle. Our article doesn't even get into all that. It gets into they having a drill that was scheduled for next month that was booked, whatever it was, three months ago few months before the bombing, of the Tea Party tribe, right-wing group that wears a, you know, American flag, Uncle Sam hat. Uh, that's the symbol of it. And they were going to blow up the people, just like, just like I was able to dig up uh, the articles a few months ago, when it was back in the news, where they're training all over the country uh, that, that the homeschoolers are going to attack the public schools. Yes. And, and they have drills unannounced where they traumatize the, the children, uh, telling, all them, uh, telling them all that this is coming. So when we come back from break, we're going to go to Ron and Robert and Regina and Chris and Aaron and many others that are uh, patiently holding. And then I'm going to get into this top story, and then I'm going to get into Obama's minion Biden warns GOP led by two young senators, Ted Cruz and Rand Paul. And he warned in the speech, they won't work with us. They're dangerous. We've got to stop them, these Tea Party people being elected. So that's real Tea Party, not the fake Tea Party the Republicans tried to co-opt. Uh, let me tell you, how do you know Rand Paul is good and Ted Cruz are good? Because the Republican leadership and the Democratic leadership have tried to do everything they can to bring them down. And whenever Biden's talking to his biggest supporters and millionaire donors, all he's doing is whining 24-7 about Rand Paul. Because they've got Rand Paul's phones tapped, folks. They know Rand Paul is a patriot. Ted Cruz, I don't know him well, so I don't know if I can trust him. I like what I see. And uh, so there you go. But I know Rand Paul's for real, as good as it gets. And they know he's been playing them, not the other way around. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay with us. Here's some of the headlines. You can't make this stuff up. DHS-funded exercise portrays free American citizens, that's a quote, Tea Partiers, as terrorist cells who they are training might commit a Boston bombing. Branding of the Tea Party as violent extremist accelerates. I'd say so. In that big cover story in Bloomberg just a few days ago, they say, quote, Alex Jones doesn't build bombs, he builds bombers. When I call for nonviolence outside of a jury, you know, finding a axe murderer guilty and executing him. I mean, I'm for due process, and everybody knows that. And, uh, but I am trying to rile the people up to the open tyranny to take our country back. And if tyrants try to oppress us or ship us off to a FEMA camp, well, you know, we got the Second Amendment for that, and that's on my right. The globalists are using our money to arm to the teeth and spy on us and deindustrialize us. It's, it's incredible. So that's coming up. I'm going to get to the big news, too. 
Obama quietly raises carbon prices, cost to climate increased. I mean, what do you say about a headline? They say a picture can tell a thousand words. I could write a book off that treasonous Bloomberg Decepticon headline. It's illegal for Obama in a regulation to raise the price when Congress hasn't even passed carbon taxes, but they already had them in there. Now he's raised it, but then gives waivers to all his friends. And then he sits on the boards and has massive stock in the Chicago Climate Carbon Exchange. And then Gore owns the London Exchange. It's called Gore and Blood. That's not a pun. The other partner's named Blood. Look it up. I'm not joking. And if they can force this through, it is a tax to them. Why not? They take Europeans' bank accounts and give it to private bankers. We, we pay $85 billion a month going up on the national debt that's more than doubled since Obama got in to give to foreign banks. And Congress is told, sit down and shut up. We're not going to tell you where that money's going. Yeah, it's $85 billion a month. But we're not going to tell you, Congress, who gets it. Sit down and shut up. No, Congress is just over the power of the purse, but that's just the Constitution. Just a bleeping piece of paper. Yeah, there's another Bloomberg article. Gore and blood linked CO2 to subprime debt. <laughs> Isn't that just special? Yeah, Bloomberg, though, is not telling you now. Obama raises the price of the collapsing carbon market to line his pockets. Or Obama raises price of direct tax to him. And then, you know, the headlines got more because it says Obama quietly raises carbon price. The, you could write a book about that statement. And then after it, as cost to climate increases, the, you know, because Bloomberg says it's the science that carbon dioxide that we exhale is heating the planet, even though the science is the opposite. And they've been proven to be known frauds and their emails are public doesn't matter. Bloomberg says as the cost to the climate, he says carbon dioxide out of coal power plants is a toxic waste and it's hurting the earth because they wave their magic wand and that's the way it is. And so you need to sit down and you need to shut up. And then the idiots go, what do you work for the oil companies? Most of the big oil companies, Dutch Royal Shell, BP, the only one that didn't 100% go along was ExxonMobil. And then five years ago, Rex Tillerson, uh, the board meeting was broken up. David Rockefeller showed up and he said, you will be removed right now. I'm the owner of this company. And the other big six or seven companies that were broken up under Standard Oil, still the owner, they just, changed, they just broke them up. You are fired right now, Tillerson, if you don't do this. That, By the way, that was in the news. Type in Rex Tillerson, David Rockefeller, click web, you can pull it up. It was a... North Carolina uh, newspaper reported on it because it was the meeting was in North Carolina. The point is, is that it's the oil companies lobbying to shut off coal. Gee, I wonder why. Coal's 52% of the energy in this country. They can use coal in some of the processes to make diesel. So if they do shut down all the oil and, and try to jack up prices, they can go to that. It's got a bunch of other distillates used that oil competes with. So let me explain something to all you morons out there. I get zero money from oil, zero money from gas. Uh, I've got family, you know, in East Texas, out there they got these tiny, you know, like where the neighbor has a gas well that pumps so much, and then, you know, you get a $500 check a month or something. And by the way, it's the gas companies that lobby against coal as well. So... If I was, I've never gotten any money from it, but if I was, I would lobby for natural gas. It's actually a pretty good fuel as well. I mean, separately, but I would be lobbying against coal because I guess I've got connections to natural gas. But the issue I'm getting at here, ladies and gentlemen, is that it's come out in lawsuits that big oil, by and large, not the local wildcatters and people, but big oil, they want to shut down their competition. Duh. Duh. 
And General Electric wants it shut down because they got three years ago a waiver, look it up, from Obama, where they can put out whatever they want out of their smokestacks. Their competition can't even put water, vapor, and carbon dioxide out now without having to pay one of five different global exchanges. Private people, you have to go buy it from Al the Pig Gore, from the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. And then it's all selectively enforced. And, and, and then I just can't get over the dumb hippie types who aren't bad people. They're not Malthusian eugenicist scum. They mean well. But they're so ignorant, they really don't understand that 51% of our energy consumption is coal. And that if they shut that down, we're dead in the water. Meanwhile, the globalists have heavily invested in China where they build three new plants a week, strangely enough, we shut down on average more than three a week. So our power's being turned off for factories, for your home, you know, the prices go up. I mean, you've seen the price of energy go up. If you plug your electric car in, it's coming from coal most of the time. That's going up. They're tearing down the dams, the hydroelectrics. We're being conquered economically. And it's on record they're doing this. And then look at these headlines. I'm going to cover this down and then come back and go to break. Look at these headlines. CNBC. Students are clamoring for fossil fuel divestment. And they have the universities owned by big mega conglomerates, tax-free families, come to them and then have all the students clamor and have rallies that are university-sponsored to have the pension funds and the school endowments divest and when you hear fossil fuel, it ain't oil, folks, mainly. It is in the coal units of those. And, of course, foreigners, like the communist Chinese, they snap up those stocks immediately. In fact, I saw a study out a month ago that actually this divestment is just, is just making the stock go up because the stock had always been locked up. People wouldn't sell it. There's only so much of it. So now, you know, it's actually getting out there into the market. You'd think that'd drive it down, but actually driving it up, making interest as people go, oh, I can get that now. It's kind of like when they, you know, sell out of something at the grocery store and it comes back in, everybody rushes in to get it. But, I mean, just talk about useful idiot morons running around going, I want to save the atmosphere, shut off the coal plants when our plants are clean as a whistle. And, and look, if they, they're suppressing all sorts of better energy systems, but they're not letting those roll out. I mean, I, I'm telling you, folks... Texas was just energy dependent four years ago. we got to buy a bunch of our power from Mexico now, and it's totally dirty stacks one mile over the border. Look it up. <clears throat> so uh, buried in a little noticed rule beside of Bloomberg on microwave ovens is a change in the U.S. government's accounting for carbon emissions. Oh, it's just an accounting thing, you know, stroke of the pen, wall of the land, kind of cool. That could have wide-ranging implications for everything from power plants to the Keystone XL pipeline, the increase of the so-called social cost of carbon. See, it just says that. Just, it just says, again, stating it's a fact that it's hurting the earth, to $38 a metric ton from 2380, adjust the calculation the government uses to weigh costs and benefits of proposed regulations. The figure is meant to approximate losses from global warming, See, again, as if it's a fact, such as flood damage and diminished crops. And then they have a huge secret geoengineering program that's admitted to exist, which if we talked to all the meteorologists, is designed to screw the country up. I mean, we're under total siege attack. America's being conquered right now, so we collapse into the arms of the collectivist government. Just like Stalin turned off, you know, the power, the gas, the coal mines, and then wouldn't let people plant crops and had secret police running around burning them for a decade in Ukraine, Poland, and a bunch of other countries until everybody collapsed and went into collectivized farms that were basically gulags. The Great Leap Forward, the Cultural Revolution of Mao Zedong, all CIA run, now declassified. 66 to 84 million, nobody knows the number, the Chinese say 80-something million, killed under a CIA Ford Foundation managed operation. And the Chinese finally figured this out and, and, and arrested his wife, and then Mao was, you know, disappeared, basically, and they said he just died. The commies don't even like Mao. 
Only David Rockefeller wrote obituary in the New York Times saying he did a great job and we need to li live like them. Our criminal government put the greatest mass murderer in history in power. That's now on record. Okay? Now, after they shut everybody down, then they'll turn stuff back on. But the point is, they're shutting everything off right now. All right, I'm done. I promise I'm going to your calls. Ron and everybody else on the other side of this quick break, 800-25-99231. I'm Alex Jones, uh, and this is the Info War, and I'm here to try to save this country and save the planet, and, and I need your help to do it. We can do it together. By the way, uh, after I take your calls, we're going to have an NSA whistleblower himself on the broadcast. Wayne Madsen will continue with calls after that as well. But um, the crew, neurotically, and that's because I've told them to do it, just searches everything I say, every claim I make, which is good because sometimes I call you know a river the wrong name. The Thames is the Thames. My brain scrambles things. Uh, but uh, they pulled up the 1970s New York Times article with David Rockefeller praising Mao Zedong for his obituary. And uh, they'll print that off. I'll be able to read that later on the broadcast. Yeah, August 10th, 1973. He talks about how great Mao was and no one can deny how fabulous his form of government is. This is from uh, one of the richest men in the world. <laughs> and they got rich because of government relationships, giving them monopolies, and they love Mao. Let's go ahead and talk to Ron in Vermont. Oh, we should trust a group like that to spy on us. Oh, but we can't spy on them because we can't be trusted. Uh, uh, yes, Ron, go ahead. Yeah, it's an honor to be on your show. I have three quick points, but uh, first, for new listeners, I, I want to make it uh, a point that you need to listen to Alex Jones' show for a good month to really, uh, if you just pick a day, you might come off as, you know, a lunatic or something, but give it time and it'll sink in and you'll verify the things that he's saying are true. Well, Ron, let me say uh, this. I mean, I mean, in a way, I am a lunatic because it'd be like if I was in Nazi Germany watching them exterminate people, I would freak out. If I was, you know, watching uh, the Romans crucify thousands of Christians for no reason, I would be freaking out. If I was watching Stalin kill people, I would be freaking out because crazy nowadays is doing something outside the norm. And so because I am upset about this and I tell it like it is and the general public has been told it's it's fun to live under this, I am crazy by modern definitions. Go ahead. Yes, everybody needs to get desensitized to the to the things that you're talking about so, you know, you don't get nervous and and Th they are true, and they are here to stay. Uh, my first point was I was watching C-SPAN this morning, and uh, Republican Sanchez, a lady from California, she was saying what a joke it was that, you know, every time they, they get permission to do what they want to do, whether it be uh, Department of Homeland Security or whatever, because she said, first I have to get permission to – get like a specialized room that, you know, it's a clean room, no bugs or whatever. So I have to get permission to get that room. Then I have to schedule it. And then the person I want to interview probably can't make that schedule. And then when we do agree, they don't show up. Or yeah, for those that don't know, Congress has had all of its authority taken and given to foreign corporations that now run all the intelligence. And they won't tell the committee chairman of the Homeland Security Committee what's in PDD-51. But the summary page says what's in it, and the orders of the Pentagon say what it is. It's a plan to arrest 50 million Americans and put us in forced labor camps. So see, even though the stuff's classified at the top, the manifestation of it is not classified. The yeah, street... She was saying... Like, like, you know, I, I'm active in, in Vermont. Uh, you know, I, I go to uh, some committees and all. And anytime there's amendments, you get, you know, the existing bill. And then you get, you know, in red ink, it tells you what the difference is. And Sanchez was saying the federal government doesn't do that. They just say, oh, it's a change based on article 15 of some section and then you got to look that up to see what the difference is it's a joke my second point is 
You know, back in 1990, I, I worked for semiconductor companies, okay, microchips and things like that. I got out uh, because of, you know, the uh, hydrofluoric acid that I, I used to work with and all on these machines. Uh, some of the most dangerous chemicals there is are... are in oh, yeah, my cousin worked in that, and he said when there was an alarm, they had to just run as fast as they could, and if they got one whiff of that stuff, they'd all be dead. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, I, I went to Fort Meade. We were installing equipment there in, in the 90s, and, uh, you know, if a chip broke or whatever, a wafer, you know, I had to, I was escorted out of the room. They'd vacuum every chip up, you know, so, you know, yeah, I guess you couldn't sneak a piece out or whatever. Yeah, for those that don't know, Fort Meade's where the NSA is based. Yeah, yeah, the, the walls are like eight inches of copper, so nothing can penetrate it. But what I was going to say back then, you know, you keep on telling people, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you don't even know the half of it. And back in 90, they were already making microchips wirelessly uh, so they can surveil, you know, combat troops in the field to know if they were dead or alive. They were giving vital signs. Yeah, you're saying back in the 1990s they already had chips in the troops. Yeah, no, I've got, I've got family that's been chipped, and they're real mad at me and say don't talk about it. Tell you what, I want to come yeah, back to you. No, no, stay there. Yeah, no, they've they've chipped the military. I want you to finish your your whistle blowing, and then we'll go to uh, Robert. Everybody else. You know the actor in Transformers and so many other programs. Back in 2008, he was on the Tonight Show talking about a dystopic NSA film he was coming out with where the computer decides the government's treasonous and attacks it, which that's a real AI scenario. <laughs> if, the, if the technocracy was actually a, you know, a, a good self-aware system, it would probably go after the New World Order, or it might go after all of us. Uh, he talked on Jay Leno about how a... Uh, calls it an FBI informant, but I've looked into the case. He's been talked to about it since. It was an FBI uh, expert who was there to advise them technically on the movie because it's about the NSA tracking him and stuff in the movie. So it was an FBI uh, advisor, when they say informant, to Hollywood about it. And just to show him, he dialed in and showed him recordings of him talking to his girlfriend. And this is exactly what I was told by the FBI a long time ago. And, of course, then it came out that OnStar listens to you can kill your car. Then it came out, everything I told you. Everything I told you. Because I had real whistleblowers who pointed me to, here's open source stuff where it's hiding in plain view. Because that's how they do it. They go, oh, it's microwave regulation. Yeah, you got to pay Obama and Al Gore billions of dollars, you know, to these front companies. Just a small, you know, just a footnote in a regulation. Oh, yeah, there's a telecommunications regulation. By law, we put snooping hubs and everything. Uh, yeah, no, no big deal. It's an example of how out of control they've gotten. And, and, and here's another example. Last week, just to show you NSA-style technology that's been deployed on Google, YouTube, Microsoft, Apple, all their systems, we under fair use, there's, there's no way in court that, that I, because I've talked to lawyers, I've researched it, I've, I've been on air 18 years. I can play a 40 second clip of Jay Leno talking to somebody on a show um, and, you know, critique it and, and give it credit and say where it came from. That's how the news does it, even if they don't have news sharing agreements, just like the news can show clips of my show without asking permission. Now, if it's an entertainment show purely, if I was a for sale entertainment show to get technical, then I'm going back to Ron and Robert and everybody else. Stay there, Ron. I'm going to get to you. If I was selling an entertainment movie or had an entertainment TV show, then I'd have to get permission to play a Jay Leno clip. But I am a news First Amendment transmission. That's the same reason ABC, CBS News, Fox News, they don't have to ask permission to play clips of what I say or what I do. I don't have to ask permission to play a Audi commercial about the green police promoting green fascism because I'm playing it to critique it. I have First Amendment commentary, but the computers don't care. If we play a Jay Leno clip here, 
they will put a strike on our YouTube channel. So if I play this, I have to go tell my YouTube guy, cut this out. Because the bots, when it publishes, when the video instantly goes up, there's, the bots are so fast now, it will scan a two-hour video, two-hour, 15 minutes of airtime in a three-hour show. It will scan it and instantly block it and give us a strike for copyright material. When it's not, people call me and say, can I put a bumper sticker on my car? You bought it. You can put whatever you want on your car. People think they have no rights, and they want to use this ignorance of copyright to control people. So, so this is an example of how everything's surveilled. You could say, well, YouTube's its own private corporation. Yes, but it operates as a public commons. And now you try to challenge playing five seconds of Jay Leno or other shows, they will, they will automatically refuse your challenge. In the past, they didn't do that. So that's an example. I want to critique Jay Leno. I want to critique uh, this Hollywood star. I want to talk about this. Totally protected, fair use, free speech, First Amendment. But it doesn't matter. The computers are now in charge. And that shows you how everything's surveilled. Every phone call, every fax, every email, everything. It's all recorded. It's all saved. I have real people listening in real time. Okay? Members of Congress, it's come out, have real people listening. Most of you, just if they want to check a file, they type a keyword in. And then they go type it in. And if they want to get you talking on the phone, they can sit there and, and put into a program. 15 years ago, this came out. They can take a recording of your voice and then have a computer that can then beat a voice print with it to then frame you. Do you understand how this, this technology is in the hands of very evil people? The only answer is to organically, to organically realize the system is organized against humanity and then seven and a half billion of us tearing out the digital TVs that are surveilling us, uh, jamming their systems, speaking out against them. They still need more authority. Exposing them, they will be forced to remove this. And this is the great challenge. Will humanity be absorbed by the rise of the machines, or will the machines empower us? The problem is the architecture is being built to dominate and dumb down. And we are now slaves of the machines. They've rewired our brains. And for most people, not to the better. Because they lazily just sit there and take it in instead of being interactive with it. It can actually boost your brain if you're interactive. And I mean really interactive, not playing some stupid video game. The real world's going on. They want you playing virtual reality instead of being in the real world. So I'm going to Ron, but I want to play this clip. This is the clip of movie star Shia on Jay Leno talking about what now, six, seven years later, or just about five years later, this is 2008, is now ubiquitous. Where if I leave this in the upload to YouTube, they will put a strike on us. We get three, they will take down that big YouTube channel that serves the public with so much information. So Shia LaBeouf, Prism Warning goes back to 2008. And notice Huffington Post is smart. They put the interview on their own server so that they don't get blocked on YouTube. And that's what we have to do more and more ourselves because it's not like I can play a 40-second clip and they're going to come after me. It's clearly commentary. I clearly have a right to be showing this, to be playing this here on the radio and TV. Huffington Post knows they have a right to put it on their own servers. And more and more, I think that's going to be the answer here to get around these bots. Here's an example. Joe Rogan, good friend of mine, frequent guest on the show. Every video we'd ever posted of him got taken down. Not a strike, but taken down. I had to have him call the company he'd hired to monetize people recording his comedy thing and putting it up. But the computer didn't recognize his comedy versus his voice on my show. And then it erased like 50-something videos going back seven, eight years on YouTube of Joe Rogan on my show or me out with Joe. And guess what? When I went in and challenged that last year, even when the company took it off, 
for me challenging it, Google gave me a strike. I'm not even allowed to have my friend that I've known since 1998 in studio with me in America. Now, that's a computer making a mistake, but this shows you how it's all surveilled. You're like, how do they record all the calls? How do they, how do they have it all? It's keyword, folks. They know Jay Leno's voice. They know the algorithm of that set. That's how it all works. Shazam came out, what, four or five years ago? You can hold your iPhone up when a car drives by playing the most obscure music. It'll tell you what it is. Now they've done stuff where they've taken my voice. And I warned of this when this first came out a decade ago. I said, there's a time where they can hit one button and release a virus that will erase my voice from the entire planet over every network in a matter of hours, especially once things go to the cloud. And now I had copyright claims by a Canadian company until I threatened to sue them, taking my videos down all over the web, not on my channel. They wanted to sneak and do it. They weren't doing it to me. They were doing it to everybody that had me with my voice, claiming copyright on my voice, when I've never signed something like that. That's happened with the guy that does the voice of Optimus Prime. Because one day my kids wanted to hear it, so I looked up and found out there were all these claims on him at book signings and stuff with little kids. They'd say, well, you do Optimus Prime for me? And it was identical, basically, in the voice print to the, op to the movie. And so copyright was claimed on him talking to a little black kid at a community event he went to. Autobots transform and roll out. And I can't do it as good as he does because I'm not him. It's kind of like idiots saying, I can do Beavis and better, Butthead better than this Mike Judge guy when he was on the show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm trying to explain to you how the NSA grid works. Google, all of it is NSA technology. They monetize. They gave to select insiders. It's all a front. Microsoft is an IBM front. They didn't think they could sell computers and have the software, so they gave it to a subsidiary. Bill Gates is nobody. He invented nothing. Do you understand that? No, this is on record. This has even come out in PBS, but they just kind of hide it in plain view. It's all fake. IBM sworn to bring in a worldwide Nazi tyranny. Look up the founder of IBM, Watson. Look up the other Watson. The, the, the discoverer of DNA says black people aren't humans. You, you need to find out who these people are, folks. All right, that's enough. I'm going to shut up. I apologize. Ron, finish your point about uh, working at Fort Meade and the NSA. Well, you know they're going to be yeah, listening you, to this. <laughs> you see, you said, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you brought up IBM. Uh, the, you know, people should read the book uh, by Edwin Black about uh, IBM and the Holocaust because they you know, ran it. Absolutely. Why do you think? Why do you think they knew where everybody was? Those numbers on on their wrists or wherever it was, those told you know their location, what their occupation was. It was the punch card. I mean, and now they're collecting all this information, and they're they're coming after everyone, just like you said. My third point, though, you know, things happen in life, and you know. I don't want to say, you know, why did God do this to me? No, yeah. things just happen, and it's up to us to choose, and I choose God. That's and, right. And, and the, the one thing I wanted to say, you know, you, you ask people, why do you think the globalists are poisoning everything? It's, it's happening to them, too, and I, I do have a thought on that. You know, you said, you know, blood is taken, you know, at, at people's birth. And I'm wondering if blood is taken at people's death. I, what do the mortuaries do with it? And it's about epigenes and, and how things in the environment turn off and on epigenes. No, no, you're really so smart. No, no, no. They, they do take blood at almost every death. It is also put in the Pentagon databases. That actually came out. I believe you're a really smart guy. And what they're doing is they're testing on us with all these poisons how to give themselves a cure, and they actually have a... Pro absolutely, absolutely. You know, they need a, a huge sample base. To and find the magic the genes. The to find the magic genes, just like the immortal cell lines they found in the last 70 years, of cells you basically cannot kill unless it's in a, in a uh, blast furnace. They want to transmutate... Uh, and, and, and recombinate 
cancer cells as the key to immortality. That's one of their main study lines. And boy, if you want the NSA listening, this is highest level security what we're covering. Go ahead. God, God does not make junk. And your genes are not your destiny. You know, your, your, your genes are good. And it's, it's everybody's screwing with them and the chemicals in the environment that are changing those genes, the epigene. But your gene is always good. There's no one on earth that, that is. That's right. It is such a lie to say 3,000 increase in breast cancer because you got bad genes. You've got genes that if you're fed poison and, 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 and it's put in your water that you'll die. I mean, it's incredible. God bless you. I really appreciate it. That was a good caller right there. That guy knows what he's talking about. All right, we've got a listener, Regina, listening on shortwave, 12160 WWCR in Pennsylvania. Regina, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Thank you, ma'am. I agree with you, Alex. I mean, I've been praying for him. Praise Jesus for his message. Um, the uh, I did listen to Sanchez this morning, too, and that's what I wanted to say. I'm answering the question, yes. Um, he, um, Snowden is a hero, not a zero. And <clears throat> Sanchez, her is, uh, Congressman Loretta Sanchez, uh, is her name. I don't know if maybe you want to try to get in touch with her, uh, because, uh, she proved to, to me what she said there. She said she didn't vote for the Patriot Act. She never votes for the reauthorization of the Patriot Act. Now let's Act. get her on. Okay. And what she said was that, uh, she specifically designated Section 305, I believe it was, and she said that what, what this got proved here, she said, yes, they, they can get uh, this Snowden because they got the power from the Patriot Act. <clears throat> and as he said... The power to snatch and grab him. And that came out in the news. They're saying they want to just disappear him. Why not? You're the good guys. You did sure disappear all those little foster kids on the C-130s. So, you know, why not disappear him for exposing your criminal mafia? Oh, yeah, let's get him. Let's put him in a FEMA camp. Let's use well, NDAA on him. Well, it, it's, uh, it was just real interesting how she, she mentioned, like he said, she has to get into these skiffs. She, um, <clears throat> she has to get authority from the other party uh, to, <clears throat> to be even allowed to talk to these uh, intelligence people, even though she's under Homeland, she's the Intelligence Committee under Homeland Security. But she says that these contractors will come in, and they have so much authority to come in. I mean, if you get a chance, it's on Washington Journal this morning. I know you got a million jobs, but she was on with Greta this morning, and I figure it was between 8.30 and 9.15 a.m. And, uh, you know, she just, she exposed exactly to anybody that thinks the Patriot Act is their friend, then they, they better realize that... The Patriot um, Act says they can break in your house and plant things, and then if you catch them doing it, it's a felony if you tell anybody they broke in your house. I mean, it's just total criminal right. government. And that's why the FBI is now publicly killing FBI agents that know the bombing was staged. The Boston bombing is why they're killing witnesses. I mean, God help us, man, this is very dangerous because they're telling them, hey, you have NDAA authorization, you know, go kill Alex Jones. Well, I think her testimony was really fundamental too because she was, you know, she was speaking as a person and a person concerned about individual rights. And as a person really who has access to the her, classified, as a person who has, now everybody's calling about this interview. I want to get her on. So we'll right. definitely call her. Uh, thank you so much. That's Congresswoman Sanchez. All right, we'll come back. Thank you, Regina. Uh, let's go to Robert in Texas next. Then uh, Chris, Aaron, Harvey, and everybody straight ahead on the other side. Be sure and become a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber to see the InfoWars nightly news. One membership is 11 memberships. That's Operation Awaken the Sleeping Giant. Share your membership today. You know, I mentioned this clip and never got to it. Uh, this is Shia LaBeouf five years ago on Jay Leno talking about the FBI advisor to the show about a spy surveillance state bragging and dialing in and showing him his phone conversations. It was the governor... I cover this in Matrix of Evil, so I remember it, in 2003, of uh, Wisconsin. When I love the data centers, the threat fusion centers. I can, if I want to find my wife, I just dial in her number, and it shows me her location. And they're like, sir, shut up, that's classified. It, it, it goes way above that. But it's like, we're the good guys. You can trust us, as Obama said. <laughs> you can trust Obama to raise the carbon tax to pay it directly to himself. Uh, we're going to go back to your calls in a moment, but uh, here is that clip.
And um, I remember we had an FBI consultant on the, on the picture telling me that they can use your ADT security box microphone to, to get your stuff that's going on in your house. Or OnStar, they could shut your car down. And he told me that one in five phone calls that you make uh, are recorded and logged. And I laughed at him no, and he all played of back them. a phone conversation I'd had two years prior Come on. to joining the picture. The FBI consultant. And it was like one of those, it was one of those phone calls that was like, you know, what are you wearing type of things. Really? <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was mad Can weird. We, wait, so you mean they had a, a record of you from... Two years prior to me joining the picture. Even being associated with the movie? With the movie. Well, that seems it's creepy. extremely creepy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And he was a consultant. Right, well, That's good. Wow. He was a consultant on uh, Eagle Eye. And of course, Leno now made the joke last night uh, that, uh, oh... Obama really does listen to the American people. We can't say he's not listening. Uh, and, and we can really say that he's our big brother. Like, kind of saying he's a brother. Uh, I mean, just amazing, ladies and gentlemen. But it's bigger than Obama. You've got the Republicans. You've got uh, all of them. The Democrats, uh, Slimeball Matthews. You've got a uh, hardball guy. You've got uh, uh, the politically incorrect guy, Bill Maher. You've got them all coming out and supporting this because they're scared. This could bring them down. These are real whistleblowers. These people are not invincible. They've tried to intimidate the American people, and it has angered the population of the world. Now, since I mentioned this earlier, I want to show it to you. Here's the New York Times when Mao Zedong died, uh, August 10th, 1973. Document cam, please, for TV viewers. You can just type in out of the search engine, David Rockefeller on uh, Mao Zedong. Uh, and, he, and he says here uh, that uh, the social experiment in China under Chairman Mao's leadership is one of the most important and successful in human history. How extensively China opens up and how the world interprets and reacts to the social innovations and the lifestyles she has developed and certain to have a profound impact on the future of many nations. Because China is the model, and he goes on. Now, he, he, he killed, the Chinese say, 84 mil. Okay, 84 mil. The CIA says 64, 65, 66 mil. And about 20 mil, you know, with gunshots to the head. Now, this is the model. They're, they're planning to shut everything off then pose as savers as they starve everybody. That's why they're digging in, getting ready for it. We're, they're probably not going to get away with it because we're exposing their whole operation. Better learn about the Ford Foundation, the Carnegie Endowment, all these people. They plan this here. They admit they've written books bragging this is the plan. Okay? I mean, I, you wonder why I know what's going to happen next, folks, because they've got a plan. They're about 10, 12 years behind. We're battling them. People say, why hadn't the evil all come yet? Why? I mean, it's bad, but not that bad. When's the FEMA camp? So you got an army manual about it. So what? When am I getting thrown in it? As soon as I can't hold this door back anymore. And it's like, bang, bang, come on, everybody, help me. Oh, yeah, you say something's bad on the other side of that door. I'm like, help me. I say something happy's on the other side of that door. I say, open it up, let them in. I have mass Stockholm syndrome. But speaking of mass Stockholm syndrome, they do this all over the country now. They have off-duty cops, and I've seen these on the news, standing there, and they take your blood forcibly. They got a tiny sign down the road saying it's voluntary. We'll be right back. Let's take some more of your phone calls. Robert in Texas, thanks for holding, brother. Uh, you're on the air. So is uh, Snowden a zero or a hero? Yes, sir, he is. I mean, I, I he, he's come out and pretty much uncovered the truth, and they're just trying to arrest him and do all this other crap to him. I'm sorry about that. Um, and, I mean, they're, they're, what they're just teaching us is if you snitch on the government, you are a bad person even though it's for the good. But you notice the and, record persecution of Obama. Uh, more, He's attacked more whistleblowers than all presidents before him. I mean, it, it's a fact. I mean, it's not just that he's a Democrat, because I'm not a Republican. I mean, he is the worst president ever as the front man, and they're going after whistleblowers, and what's it doing? It's causing more whistleblowers. Because I'm here to tell you, the smart globalists know how to creep around and just make tyranny easy, but these globalists now want to really push it and it's not intimidating people. I predict you're going to see even more whistleblowers. I mean, record levels now are already going public, but I think it's going to be explosive, okay? Because people are tired of being pushed around, and they're like, what, you think I'm scared of you? 
when you're committing crimes, I'm going to expose you. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, if we, we need a lot more people like that because if no one steps up, I mean, the government's just going to keep hiding in the shadows behind the curtains, and we do need courage people like that. We need a lot of people to stand up. And if, I mean, the, I believe America's going to fall either way, I mean, predicting in the Bible. But if we don't try and do anything, those who do the, the wrong will get away, and we were just left with nothing. I hear you, Robert. I hear you. Uh, let's go to Chris in Texas. Chris, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. What's your take? Thanks, Alex. Quick point. Absolutely, Snowden is a hero. But I think more importantly than the information he brought to light is the hope that, that he would inspire more whistleblowers to come forward because we know the government's not going to incriminate themselves. As a matter of fact, they've shown time and time again that they'll lie till they're blue in the face to protect themselves, not only because they think we're stupid, but because there's virtually no repercussions, they can get away with anything they want to get away with. Who got fired after Fast and Furious? All these scandals, nobody gets in trouble. So I hope that 20 more Snowdens come forward because that's really the only hope that we have of exposing these criminals. Yeah, in fact, he should be calling for more whistleblowers to go public. He's made more statements today to the South China Morning Post. I'm going to cover some of those with a man who's never blown the whistle on classified info, but who's pointed out things that have been leaked so he can cover it. Uh, is Wayne Madsen, who worked for many years in naval submarine warfare and then worked uh, high level uh, at the NSA. And the more I learn, the more I respect this man uh, and, and his level of knowledge. I'm not hyping this next guest coming up, but I'm going to tell him, you know, go as far as he can with letting us know how bad it is. He was the guy that said when Obama came in, he, was a, he hated Bush, by the way. Uh, you know, I would call you know Wayne Madsen like a populist, real progressive, not like a communist one or a fascist one. But you know, Wayne Madsen said they're, that they've set up a special unit. He even knew the name of it. Uh, and then about a week after he did this, I got threatened. One of the real threats, keep you know, to not talk about it. But of course, I kept going. That only encourages me. Uh, they got very upset whenever Wayne. Uh, came on and released the name of the program spying on whistleblowers. So we'll go over all of that with him on the other side and where he thinks this is going. Anything else, uh, Chris? That's it. No, Madsen's a patriot. Look forward to the interview. That's all I got. Thanks, Alex. All right. Good to hear from you. I really appreciate you being on with us. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just call Wayne Madsen up, and I don't say, what's your view before I put him on? So I don't know what he's going to say about Snowden. Sometimes he throws me curveballs because he really knows what he's talking about. I mean, he really does. I mean, I remember, like, interviewing Madsen 10 years ago, and I'm like, you know, this can't be. And then it's just every time, even outlandish stuff, it turns true. Uh, and he was the guy who got me in touch with the D.C. madam. And, then, of course, she ended up getting killed. I mean, I, I just, this is not a game, folks. This show is not a game. I mean, we don't tend to build stuff up when we have these type of people on the show, like Colonel Schaefer or uh, Bell Edmonds or Wayne Madsen, but they are risking their lives. I mean, he's been told they're coming to kill him. You want to know what the New World Order is going to look like? It's going to look like Maoist China. That's where the globalists would like to take us. And I stand against that, and I hope you stand with me, because it's not courage that brings me here to fight these people. It's self-preservation. A rat that tries to swim out of a sinking ship does not have courage. It has self-preservation. It takes dumb courage to sit in the bottom of the ship while it's sinking. But we don't have to get off the ship, ladies and gentlemen. We have to bring the globalists to justice or they're going to sink this ship collectively. Wayne Madsen is the perfect guest to be able to get on right now in the middle of this giant ongoing NSA scandal. And let's not forget, they were using it to target the Tea Party, the press, right-wing groups, left-wing groups, pro-life groups. That's already come out. Now with Snowden, they want to distract away from that. But we had, on Monday, Congressman uh, from Texas uh, here on the uh, broadcast, Stockman, and he, he said, yes, we should go after this illegal spying, and it's horrible, and why is it targeting the Tea Party? He was on with Wayne Madsen sitting in for me when I was flying back from London. And that's good. See, he's a, he's a real libertarian type. Ron Paul, Rand Paul have spoken out. The rest of the Republicans are saying that Snowden is a traitor. Democrats are saying he's guilty of treason. It's a felony every time they spy on us without even the rubber stamp fake FISA warrant. And then Obama comes out and says, trust us or something bad's going to happen. We're going to have a problem. 
uh, an obvious threat. Well, Wayne Madsen is a Washington, D.C. investigative journalist, uh, and he's written for the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Houston Chronicle, Miami Herald, and hundreds of major publications uh, online. Uh, and he, of course, worked in, in submarine warfare before joining uh, a high-security job uh, managing a large team at the National Security uh, Agency. Uh, he wrote the best-selling book, The Handbook on Personal Data Protection. He also wrote other acclaimed books on the pr data protection law, genocide, and covert operations in Africa. He's a frequent uh, witness before the House of Representatives on UN uh, criminal tribunal law, uh, Rwanda massacre, terrorism, international panel for the French government. He travels all over the world to war zones to cover things for us and for his own site, WayneMadsonReports.com, WayneMadsonReport.com. And uh, Madsen is a member of the Society of Professional Journalists and the National Press Club. But the real reason he's here is NSA. And he was on right after Obama got elected, and he said they are intensifying persecution of whistleblowers. They've set up a classified group. He gulped and gave us the name. I got threats over it. He had to leave the country for a while because he was told by national security sources they've got, a, they've got button men on the street. And 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 you better go public about this, but also you know give give it time for them to call back the hitman. And by the way, I've had multiple people he got me in contact with for the show. They end up killing. So this isn't a game. Uh, and uh, he can really tell you a lot. I mean, I'll put it to you that way. He's the guy that told people years ago, meet in parking garages. You know, the, like Drudge has been saying, meet in parking garages because uh, it's all surveilled. And he joins us. And and, and I want to get into the, working at the NSA. I know it's classified, but. I mean, obviously, this is all coming out. It's in the, a lot of it's hidden in plain view. What can you talk about that's been leaked or declassified or inadvertently declassified? I know that's one way to talk about stuff that normally you couldn't talk about. What do you think of Snowden? Where's all this going? Is the answer to the persecution of whistleblowers more people going public? Because I see that happening. Is the Iron Fish backfiring? Uh, go over it all. Wayne Madsen. Well, yes, Alex, I want to congratulate you on giving it uh, to those uh, slack-jawed poltroons meeting over at Bilderberg. Uh, <laughs> they need the light of day. But uh, what, what the, the deal with uh, Mr. Snowden, Ed Snowden, I've met, I have been in contact over the last several years with many NSA whistleblowers, also whistleblowers from other intelligence agencies, CIA and, and lesser known ones. And uh, I, I mean, I, he is the, the typical case except at least in his case, he took some measures to leave the country. I don't, I'm not sure about this strategy of going to Hong Kong. He may turn out to be a pawn between China and the United States. But everything he said has been verified to me by former people who worked at NSA and people who are still there. I'll give you an example. I just was contacted by somebody who, has, uh, who still works in the uh, NSA community and uh, said that there are people who have access to this material, this PRISM-type metadata, who are spying on their spouses, ex-spouses, and even selling some of the information to private investigators on the outside. Uh, is that terrorism? Is that counterterrorism? I think not. And, uh, and that's, exactly yeah. what, that's exactly what Snowden said, and I talked to one of these globalists when I was in England, and, and I brought up the point that I've gotten the calls, my wife's gotten them, where they tell you what you were just talking about in a previous phone call to, to then say, hey, do I got your attention? I'm going to cut your head off if you don't back off, buddy. And, and the point is, is that I know a lot of people, you see cops all the time using the databases they have that are nothing compared to this to harass ex-wives or husbands or whatever. And that's what Snowden said. He said, analysts are running around doing whatever they want. And, and, and... You know, now they've got Alexander and others at NSA saying that isn't true. Wayne, tell us what your whistleblowers are telling you. Well, basically, they're saying they're verifying what, what Snowden had to say. Now, uh, it's funny how his uh, the people who support NSA, I want the, the group that's the internal NSA security group, and they obviously went and knocked on his mom's store in Ellicott City, Maryland the other day. Uh, these people make the FBI look like the Girl Scouts. These are uh, the, these uh, Q group people, it's called the Q group, uh, they have basically no oversight. Uh, they also work closely with a group at NSA of psychiatrists and psychologists. So anytime a whistleblower comes forward, they call these, these shrinks call the people in, and then they're determined to be crazy, and then they use that as a pretext to take their 
uh, access. Now, away. now, by the way, this is nowhere in the news, but the last you know a few years that you broke at WayneMadsonReport.com, and, and and now this will probably break because now attention is on it. I mean, we've had so many whistleblowers yeah. on, but I mean, this is from. Tell people specifics on the Q group because you're the originator of that information. You're up there on Capitol Hill. I mean, the Q group, this is the Praetorian Guard of the Big Brother Snoop system. Tell us about them. Well, this is this is NSA's own little KGB and Stasi all wrapped up in one. They're the internal security. Now, when I worked at NSA, it was called the M group. Yeah, obviously, an intelligence agency like NSA is going to have a group responsible for security and counterintelligence. But now the Q group has grown in size to more than 300 people. It's become a force unto itself. It's an intelligence agency within an intelligence agency. And what they do is uh, uh, the reason you're going to get more whistleblowers coming forward is the word out of NSA is they're now really cracking down. Uh, every time there's a leak like this, they really get tougher and tougher on their employees. So obviously you're going to see. Well, it's like ATF a few months yeah. ago, that video. Yeah. It said, A, don't, you know, the acting director said, A, don't show people this video. So people released it. And B, you must be subservient and do what we say and only talk about corruption through channels, which breeds corruption. And people are sick of it. I'm sorry, but, but I mean, you agree with me. The reason then that you see so many whistleblowers is that they're harassing people. Yeah, absolutely. And and the other thing, that the people on the inside of NSA, whether they're uh, uh, military or civilian employees, government employees of NSA or contractors, as was Snowden. Now, I know he, he went back and forth between contractor and, um, and, and, and uh, government employee. Uh, they, they all say the same thing. There are abuses taking place. Mr. Binney and, and Weeby and Tice and and, and Tom Tam from the Justice Department, and, and Loomis, and so many others, Tom Drake, they've all come out and said the same thing. These were senior level people at NSA. So it's across the board that the abuses are happening. And you've got what, General Alexander, who's I think now probably the, the longest serving director of NSA. Before him, it was uh, General Hayden. You've got these guys that are becoming like the FBI director, 10 year terms, it seems. You got Alexander. How many Bilderberg meetings did he attend in the past? He didn't go this year, but I counted them. He's gone to five in the past. So he says he's he's loyal to the Constitution. Ah, it looks like he's more loyal to the bylaws of the Bilderberg group. I, I've never seen an NSA director go go to these groups, these foreign groups, uh, where he's obviously violating the Logan Act. That's another act uh, that ought to be uh, enforced. Uh, these people can't conduct their own foreign policy, but he probably has a, a pass from Obama uh, as he had a pass from Bush. Uh, uh, the other thing is uh, people are attacking Snowden. They're saying, well, he couldn't have had all this access. And uh, he worked at the CIA and he worked here and he made, he said he made 200 K. Uh, we know that these contractors raid other contractors. They get signing bonuses to go from one contractor to another. The people who are making these comments have no knowledge how uh, the NSA world operates. They're complete morons. My dad yeah. was offered in the 80s yeah. uh, like $400,000 a year yeah. as a oral surgeon uh, to go work in black operations that involved you know, planning things and spies, basically. He wasn't told more than that in cybernetic type stuff. And I mean, that's like that was like a million dollars back then. People have no idea that a, that the low level contractors now are getting like a hundred thousand dollars a year just to do contract security, and that most of them are getting two hundred thousand. Yeah, and there's something else about Snowden why uh, why they're being very silent at the White House, and while they're re why they're reacting so fiercely. Fine, uh, Diane Feinstein and 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 and, and uh, this guy Peter King calling him a traitor and saying that the reporters ought to be also prosecuted. Um, there is, a, and I haven't written about this yet uh, in light of the recent developments, but there is a group that is a joint NSA-CIA activity. It's known internally as F6. It's called the Special Collection uh, Service. It's located in, in uh, Beltsville, Maryland, in the, in not far from NSA headquarters. And what they do is they go abroad and put in bugs uh, they're 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 like your James Bond type thing. So they have the technicians with NSA, and then they got the CIA guys that, that facilitate this. Uh, these are black bag operators, and the fact that Snowden uh, was stationed in Misawa at the NSA base in Japan, and he was in Kunia at, the, at what they call NSA Hawaii, 
uh, on the island of Oahu, and that he worked at the CIA for a short time and said he, he did some work in uh, Switzerland and in other countries in Europe. Uh, he could, in fact, be the first whistleblower out of the Special Collection Service, F6. Uh, he wouldn't be the first one who ratted this organization out. Very and he says effect. a lot more is coming. Yeah. Uh, what do you think he saw uh, that freaked him out so bad? I mean, he's probably had the same access to stuff like Sibel Edmonds. He probably knows the uh, things that the uh, shadow government's running. Yeah. I, I'm, well, there, apparently there's a few reports that he actually has a list of people who are being surveilled. Uh, this, the, this has come out before. Uh, these leaks have happened over the last several uh, decades. I remember there was a woman named Peg Newsham that worked at the NSA facility in Menwith Hill in the UK. She was a contractor. I believe it was for, uh, for Lockheed. Uh, but uh, she said that they, she overheard uh, Strom Thurmond talking on the phone. So when, uh, you know, when they talk about we don't target Americans, there is uh, it's enough evidence that uh, that's just uh, patently false and General Clapper, uh, like all these guys in the intelligence community, all they do is cover up when they're caught. They do the soft. Can you duty. talk about what you did at the NSA that without? Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. I, well, I worked in communications security, so I was on the side of the NSA, which, you know, I mean, we have to protect our own communications. Uh, that, that's, I guess, pretty much the benign side of it. But I do know that anyone, because of operation security and communication security, that uh, anyone who used a government telephone uh, or used uh, government computers was liable to be listened in on by NSA. It's part of the deal. Uh, even the, the president, because the president would speak on something called a secure telephone unit. NSA had the codes for that. So conceivably, yes, even then the president could be listened in on. But that's not uh, what Snowden was saying here. They're saying that's ridiculous that he could listen to the phone calls of the president. That's not what he said. He said, if I had a personal email account for President Obama, I could I could read his email. That's what he said. But everybody's taking what this guy uh, said out of context. Uh, they're attacking the messenger. What do you think they'll try to do to him? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I hope um, I hope he's um, he's got another plan. I, I, I would not want to see him stay in Hong Kong. Um, I've made some efforts to try through intermediaries to get in touch with him if he's still in in hong kong uh, there there are other alternatives he should uh look at but the uh what, what the justice department will do is uh, go to interpol and get a red notice and uh, arrest warrant issued uh, they, uh, uh the secretary of state Kerry could revoke his passport which would make him a stateless person uh and make him illegal in hong kong he can stay there for 90 days but if they revoke his passport his 90-day visa is is worthless uh the idea that he might go into the mainland China, he, he could turn up being a pawn between two superpowers, not a good idea. But there, but this brings up an interesting point, Alex. You know, there's not a whole lot of countries where Americans could go to to escape. Uh, this is, you know, Cuba, maybe Venezuela. We've got Jones Dottier, the member of the uh, Icelandic Parliament, coming on Friday. She's trying to get him to go there. But if that's the case, uh, you know, he'll have to still hide out because... They'll just, yeah. you know, they'll just send, you know, send a woman into his room to claim he raped her. Yeah, and the other thing about Iceland, there's a new right-wing government there. This isn't the former government that had this idea will become a free, free zone for uh, information. It's a, it's a new government. It's a right-wing government. And yeah, Iceland's a member of NATO. Uh, some people have suggested uh, that he go to New Zealand. There's people there that would uh, said they would try to give him asylum. You know, you got this uh, mega upload guy in New Zealand that. Uh, he's what about German. Sweden? What about Sweden? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend Sweden. They, 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 uh, they WikiLeaks. You know, yeah, with well, the WikiLeaks thing, there's not a whole lot of havens for us anymore. Is New that, Zealand good? I mean, uh, where? Uh, well, mega. This guy, mega upload, who uh, the U.S. wants extradited for, you know, they say, oh, he he stole some intellectual property from billionaires in uh, Hollywood in the recording industry. Uh, the Supreme Court in New Zealand, apparently the courts have shot down that extradition request. So he's still there. So Yeah, uh, nowadays they would extradite yeah. Serpico and probably publicly hang him on television. I mean, this is a th I mean, oh, yeah. uh, how are things going for the New World Order right now? I mean, obviously they cannot be happy about everybody was starting to blow the whistle on them and the fact that, uh, that they've been using the NSA against libertarian groups. Well, people are getting tired of the, the you know, United States as the, uh, bull in the China shop. I think it was interesting just the other day that former Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Prime Minister Lubbers, uh, said that uh, he revealed that there's 22 U.S. nuclear weapons that a 
at a at a NATO base in the Netherlands. And uh, you know, I mean, uh, here, here's a here, here's a, a case where the air force, the Dutch air force, said he's not supposed to be talking like that. You know, this is a former prime minister. I think more and more people are willing uh, to talk about these things. And um, and uh, and as far as um, um, Mr. Snowden's concerned. Uh, he, he's one in a long line of people who have come forward. Remember in the lead up to the Iraq war, uh, a, a woman at uh, GCHQ, a Chinese linguist named Catherine Gunn, uh, came forward and said, look, here's the classified emails telling us to eavesdrop on all the members of the UN Security Council who are sitting on the fence on that war resolution to authorize the invasion of Iraq. Uh, everybody knew that she didn't do. She did not do that on her own. That uh, you know, Robin Cook, the foreign secretary, that's ultimately in charge of GCHQ. That's Britain's NSA counterpart. Sure. Probably with a wink and a nod, said, "Go ahead and, uh, and sure. reveal this." And then we all know what happened to Robin Cook. They said he died of a sudden heart attack. He fell down his head while hiking. Well, well, obviously the heart. answer to this is not to lay down for people to stand up, but. But yeah. take Sabelle Edmonds, where, where it was white slavery, weapons, running Al Qaeda. She exposed yeah. all that. We've got her coming on later in the week. Yeah. But 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 we've got things like that unfolding. What if NSA people, you know, who know what the government's really doing, know what they're into? Uh, that's why a lot of the top government people have facilities they go to that have no technology in them. A lot of Hollywood people have now done that because they understand it. I mean, if, if, if I was corrupt globalist. I would not have 800,000 contractors with access to top secret stuff and hundreds of thousands that can dial into anything. I mean, that just sounds like a recipe for disaster uh, and something that would burn the establishment. Uh, I mean, because next time it's not going to be NSA leakers that are just releasing that they're spying on people. You're going to end up having NSA people. I know they've got snoopers that try to pick up on this that are going to use this to expose dark side government and narcotics trafficking, snuff filming, all the stuff these guys are into. Uh, so uh, what's your take on that? And what are you hearing from your whistleblower sources? Well, you know, it's not been easy for whistleblowers or members of the press recently because, as you said, Obama has invoked the Espionage Act of 1917. This was invoked by Woodrow Wilson uh, to go after people who did not support the war effort against Germany. And that was a needless war for us to get into on behalf of the British Empire and in, in, in the First World War. Uh, but, uh, but he's invoked it six times. There are grand juries now impaneled on several other people that I'm aware of, uh, whistleblowers and members of the press. Uh, we, you know, we had Peter King saying he wants to go after Glenn Greenwald and, and Bart Gelman from the Washington Post. This is after what they've done with the uh, AP. Alex, last, last week I was at the Radio and TV Correspondence Center in Washington, D.C. Obama spoke there in 2009. This is not to be confused with the White House Press uh, Correspondence Center. That's the big Hollywood glitter, glitterati one in April. This is the one where the real working journalists are present. Uh, Obama did not even RSVP them. Uh, they called all afternoon. He, and he didn't send, last year he sent uh, Biden, he didn't send anyone from the administration. I said, hey, what, what's going on here? Is, is Obama, does he want a war with the media? And the, and the answer was, yeah, obviously. And look what's happened. Just, now we have a leak of a State Department internal report that the U.S. ambassador to Belgium uh, is reputedly uh, not only uh, chasing hookers in Brussels parks, but, but also children. A pedophile, right, exactly. So why do you, you know, wh wh what are they concerned about with leaks? This is exactly, and I'm glad I could gloat and say, look, I report a Q group and I report all this years ago. But you know what? I welcome the fact that the corporate media is now focusing on these stories. I'm not going to gloat. I'm not going to say I, I told you so. I welcome uh, them. Uh, you know, I could say I welcome them waking up to smell the coffee. But I, I'm sincere in that. I'm glad they're uh, looking into it. All right. I want to come back and take some phone calls with listeners that want to talk to Wayne Madsen, Aaron. Devoted Ally, Simon, Harvey, uh, Dugall. We're going to get to all of you who want to talk about this NSA situation. Straight ahead with uh, former NSA uh, officer Wayne Madsen. Ladies and gentlemen, Obama calls Constitution Charter of Negative Liberties. So now he has openly come out. Let's, let's get the video of that and actually said the Constitution is enslaving you. Don't worry, it's already all been thrown out the window and look at all the bad stuff that's happening. DHS wants equipment 
for riot control stations. Yeah, I, I, I told you that from one of our um, TSA sources. First, I was told it by a caller who worked at a big warehouse in Oklahoma, and then I got contacted by a source above TSA. I'll just say it's one of the companies that manages them. They have contractors. And they said last year they're deploying these riot control stations, and they're going to have TSA all over the place. We broke that. We had an article about it. Boom, that just came out. Bomb shell on Infowars.com. Northern Colorado ready to secede over intrusive government. And that's another article. That's what the uh, riot police are for. See, they implode the society, then use the crisis as the pretext to clamp down. DHS-funded exercises portrays free American citizens as terrorist cell. That's a big article. In the Boston Globe, two months before the bombing, they were going to have a drill of people with backpacks bombing a public event who were from the right-wing Tea Party militia. And they were going to go with that, and then... We found out about the drill, so they backed off and went with the uh, Chechen brothers. I, I want to get back into the NSA and calls here with you, Wayne, but I really shook them up, and, and my listeners did, and the radio show did, and they've got articles how we got sevenfold record traffic. I mean, we had one day, like, it was a ridiculous number. The, the analytics said, like, 12 million visitors to one site and 5 million or something to the other. It was just insane. We used to get like a million visitors or something. Uh, and I'm sitting there looking at that, and, 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 and now they've got Bloomberg coming out two days ago saying Alex Jones doesn't build bombs, he builds bombers. And they have all these people saying Alex Jones is a terrorist and Alex Jones is dangerous. And they had a drill. The brothers, it turned out, were being sent overseas to CIA meetings uh, for destabilization programs. That all, got, that all came out. They've killed two FBI agents that were involved in their arrest. They've killed one of the friends, shooting him in the top of the head. Wayne Madsen, from your sources now in hindsight, uh, what are they so scared of in the Boston bombing? You've got these Saudi nationals being protected and Michelle visiting them. We're now in hindsight. What best, I mean, all I know is they're lying. There's evidence of an operation. There was a drill. They're covering it up. They're saying don't look at it. It's the classic MO. We don't know exactly what they did, at least at least I don't, from all your sources on Capitol Hill, Wayne, what do we best know now in hindsight about the Boston bombing? And why now are they in a conniption fit with 15, 20 hit pieces a day, investigative journalists crawling all over me trying to find dirt or manufacturing it, uh, and saying I'm a terrorist? I mean, I, they've never come out and said that. Uh, should I be worried here, Wayne? Well, we all have to be worried because look what they're doing to Ed Snowden. I mean, we're all subject uh, to that type of uh, psychological warfare campaign. I have a story up today on the website. Uh, uh, we, we know that uh, the Sarnia brothers, um, uh, Tamerlan and Johar, uh, that their uncle, Uncle Ruslan, who changed his name from Sarnia to Sarni, uh, worked uh, and, and actually was the... Uh, uh, the ex-son-in-law of a guy, uh, former CIA guy named Graham Fuller. Now, all of that was reported on Graham Fuller, who, who he was actually uh, in doing business with, uh, setting up these Chechen uh, NGOs, some of which were accused of being linked to terrorism against Russia. Uh, we were told, oh, Graham Fuller, he was a station chief for the CIA in Kabul. I, I have documents that I just yanked uh, recently from, uh, from CIA sources um, that show that Graham Fuller was a right-hand man of William Casey. Bill Casey, the architect of Iran-Contra, uh, the, the guy who, you know, gave a deathbed interview, uh, supposedly to Bob Woodward, if you can believe that. Uh, but it clearly shows, if I've, got, I've scanned these documents in, you can see that in one case, Bill Casey was getting ready to go meet with President Reagan at, at what they call a national policy uh, security group meeting in the White House Situation Room, and before Casey went to talk to Reagan, he talked to Graham Fuller. That, that's, uh, that, that's not a low-level guy by any stretch at the CIA. I, I was also informed that Graham Fuller in 1987 was uh, very instrumental in Israel setting up a, a, a counterpart to um, the Fatah, the PLO, the Yasser Arafat's organization, and we know that group now is Hamas. Uh, we see the CIA time and time again involved in 
and, and, and terrorism themselves. That was the fake Al-Qaeda network. I mean, even the Jerusalem yeah. Post admits Israel created in, what, 1974, a fake, yeah. a, a, a fake group to, to create the threat. Right, and we know that the CIA, where did the Al-Qaeda resources come from? The Mujahideen that the CIA supported in the war against the Soviets in Afghanistan. Uh, we see this time and time again. The Kosovo Liberation Army, a terrorist group, and now their former uh, leader is the Prime Minister of Kosovo. He's also Madeleine Albright's, his one, um, her one-time toy boy. Uh, you know, I mean, you look at this stuff and, you know, You've got the toy boys, you've got the pederasts, you, you know, I mean, what are they trying to cover up? This is what they're trying to cover up. We also know that the State Department's been accused of, of running drugs out of some of the embassies. There, there's a shocker. Uh, you know, this government is absolutely corrupt. And I used to teach uh, security courses uh, for the Navy. And I, one thing I always said is, if, if you, uh, a computer security officer at a command, discovers something, whether it's financial fraud or something against the law, it's not only your right, it's your duty if you can't get anyone like the IG or the command to take care of it. It's your duty to expose it. And I, I, I mean that as much today as I did then. And by the way, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've you know, studied the history of it. You lived it. Up until the last decade, that's what you're supposed to do. You yeah. become complicit if your chain of command doesn't do the right thing. Exactly. And and then as, as many whistleblowers have stated, the, the general counsel, the inspector general, and even the Congress, you look at NSA, who's the congressman that represents Fort Meade, Maryland? His name is Dutch Rupersberger. He's a Democrat, but he's a, you know, he's one of these Dino types. He's on the NSA payroll. Uh, you look at uh, uh, Diane Feinstein, who's her husband, Richard Bloom. He's a war profiteer. Uh, he owns these major He's got investments in these major intelligence and military uh, uh, companies. Uh, and, and Peter King, I mean, this guy used to donate money to the provisional wing of the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. He's got a lot of nerve accusing people of being, a, you know, f uh, helping terrorists and being traitors. Uh, this guy, King, ought to be thrown out. But you, you got to look at who are, who's electing guys like Ruppersberger and Peter well, King. Well, that's the thing. When you look at these guys, they are gangsters. Oh, yeah. And you're up there on Capitol Hill. I've been around some of these guys before. They are yeah. arrogant thugs, and I'm sick of their garbage. Yeah. Every time I go up there, I make sure my, my uh, button on my uh, back pocket is buttoned because, you know, these, <laughs> guys, these guys will lick your wallet in a New York heartbeat. Now, I want to go to some phone calls and get to some other news here with you. But, but one point I wanted to raise, Russia may deem civil servants' use of Gmail, that's Google Mail, folks, and Facebook high treason, and the Russians have come out and said Google, Facebook are basically NSA fronts. Well, that's been declassified. So the American people need to understand that foreign governments tell people, don't even talk to your wife on Gmail. And people say, well, what do I have to hide? They could plant stuff on there. From your research, who is Google? Who is Facebook? I mean, from my research, it's not just that they work with the government. They were created by the government. Yeah, Google and Oracle actually were code names of, of uh, R&D programs within the CIA many, many years ago. And the CIA has a group called InQtel. They actually go out and look for startup companies. They'll pump uh, a few million in. This, this Palantir that is now reported to be the company that uh, developed the PRISM system started in 2004 with a $2 million uh, seed contract from the CIA. They're now worth $2 billion. Where did they get $2 billion? It's because of an agency like the NSA gave them these huge contracts. And I thought it was very interesting that their C C CEO, Alex Karp, uh, was uh, President Bilderberg, uh, the, the one over in England, where you were there. That's right. Let's uh, go further, and, though. And then how it works is the CIA will put $2 million, $10 million into a company, give it contracts after that. And then lo and behold, five years later, CIA guys go into private practice and they get jobs at Google making 50 mil a year. Oh, yeah. oh isn't that just cute? Yeah. Well, I've, these are the new these are the new contractors. In the old days, you know, it was always RCA and and uh, Boeing uh, computer systems and uh, you know, but it, it's the same revolving door. Uh, the only way to get rid of this system is to get rid of the system. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it's that simple. Uh, you know, they, they talk about, well, we need to look 
uh, revise the Patriot Act. No, get rid of the darn Patriot Act. Uh, Here's the deal. They want yeah. us all to line up like prisoners and to have yeah. no due process. They're the ones staging the Al-Qaeda bit of garbage. They're the ones groping us at the airport and having the toilet safety to police there. They're the ones ruining our future, trying to force vaccines in us, trying to push psychotropic drugs on school kids. They are a pack of lunatic scum. You work in and around these people most of your adult life, and, and the thing is, it just keeps popping up as they're pedophiles or they're devil worshipers or they're Man. sadists. I mean, who are these people really? Because they don't want to just steal money. They want to hurt goodness. That's why I'm so committed against them. It's not like their boss hog just wanting to steal some money. I would fight that, but not, you know, to the, you know, to the death. I would try to expose it. But I mean, these people are so evil. Who are they? I mean, why are they so bad? Well, they're exceptional. I mean, they consider themselves to be exceptional. They're they are the elites. You know, you mentioned Mao earlier, Chairman Mao. Well, one of the things he did with the the Cultural Revolution back in the '60s, you know, he took he took all their government people and paraded them in the street. In some cases, stripped them down to their underwear, made them wear dunce caps, and and then the people, the Chinese people, like whacked them with bamboo sticks. Uh, wouldn't you love to do that on Constitution Avenue? Have like one parade out of out of Congress, uh, running down towards the White House, and then getting the other ones coming out of the White House on the way back. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, we, we need, I don't I'm not saying we need that type of thing, but we do need a cleansing, uh, of, of these people. These people are absolutely, uh, horrible. Uh, I, I, I've met with them. I know some of them, some of them are well-intentioned when they become members of Congress, but it doesn't take long before they start getting sticky fingers and, uh, start looking out for themselves instead of the people they were elected to represent. As best you know, though. Uh, talking to whistleblowers, are more of them planning to go public right now? Had you ever heard of Snowden before he went public? I, I never heard of Snowden, but I, I'm not surprised that uh, somebody like him came forward. Uh, what's going? On, what's happening now in NSA? Is they're really drilling down uh, once again, or you know, you you know, you don't talk, uh, you sign an oath, and they're letting them know what, what you know how many years they could face in prison. Uh, so that's going to have a, some effect in, in the in the short term. But uh, as these people get more bold with these uh, systems, this Utah data center that's going to come online in September, that's going to be the big mother load of, uh, uh, of data. This is the old, uh, by the way, this is the old trusted information awareness system that uh, Admiral Poindexter tried to get started at the Homeland Security Department years ago. And when I was with the Electronic Privacy Information Center, we, we actually uh, submitted a FOIA request on how extensive that was. Uh, we won that in court before Judge Bates in the District of Columbia. And when the, when the information came out on how extensive it was, Congress cut off the funding. But I heard then that what they did is Homeland Security just turned it over to NSA to implement. And look what they've done. They've implemented. It's called PRISM. It's going to be uh, largely housed at that Utah, Utah data center that's uh, 17 football Well, they've field. got a giant one uh, in San Antonio. And then they've got yeah. one. They've got one uh, outside Austin. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah. They're building all sorts of little private ones. Oak Ridge, Tennessee, there's a new one there, and there's there's a $780 million complex going into Fort Meade, uh, which is going to be yet an additional uh, facility at Fort Meade at, at the NSA headquarters campus. So, uh, And then you've got uh, Cunea in Hawaii. That's a new building where that does uh, eavesdropping. On sure. Uh, we're going to take Pacific. calls now, but, but, but Wayne Madsen, anything else you want to add that after you're gone, you wish you would have had time to um, talk about? Well, I, I just uh, think that uh, what, what people have to do is uh, get, get on these members of Congress that are calling uh, Snowden a, a traitor and let them know uh, that, you know, uh, we'll de that we the people determine who the traitors are, not people like Peter King, who supported I Irish terrorism, blowing up subway trains in London. Uh, and certainly not. Di look, Diane Feinstein, she would have never gone beyond San Francisco politics had she not glommed onto that whole uh, uh, George Moscone, uh, Harvey Milk being shot by uh, Dan White. It's almost like she may have been forcing the Twinkies down Dan White's throat. I mean, she's profited from that that double assassination so much. Uh, she she's a poltroon and always has been. She she's she's uh, no liberal from San Francisco. Uh, she she supports every surveillance uh, system that's ever walked down the pike. So people in California need to get after Feinstein. They, and the people in Maryland. And Bill Maher, Bill Maher's a pig. Oh.
Bill Maher, Bill Maher is, you know, I mean, what does he know about the, uh, any of this stuff? You, you see these people, they're, they're talking about, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, Al Franken, Senator Franken. So he, he agrees with the, uh, uh, the system. It's, it's, it's not hurting anyone. It's a scumbag. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. A comedian? Comedians tell me about NSA systems. What does Gilbert Gottfried have to say? Chris Rock. How about Jackie Green? Why don't they ask them while they're at it? Well, Chris Rock says Obama's our father and do what he says. Uh, yeah, I heard that before in Germany. Uh, yeah. Aaron in Nevada, you're on the air. Go ahead. Welcome. And uh, Thank you, Alex, and uh, congratulations on your great reception in uh, the United Kingdom there, man. That was really great. It, uh, believe me, it was phenomenal. It really shows people are waking up. All right, by the way, Bill Casey did not give a deathbed confession, so Madsen is really kind of irrelevant at this point. Snowden is a great American. Let's just be clear about that. And hey, wait Snowden. a minute. Wait a minute, Aaron. Uh, 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 I mean, Madsen doesn't make stuff up. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I vaguely remember. Uh, I, mean, I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back up what you're saying. Go I'll, ahead. I'll do that. Bill Casey was found dead in his uh, backyard pond, face down in the water. So Bill Casey could not give a deathbed confession. Sure, sure. It was a kayak. Uh, I mean, expand on I, that. I think you're confusing Bill Casey with Bill Colby. Yeah, two different people. Okay, anyways. So you want to apologize, Dwayne? Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Madsen. Great work on the, uh, the other guy up there in California. I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I get names mixed up, too. I apologize All when right. I call the Thames, the, I mean, the Tims, the Thames. No, it's confusing. <laughs> it, gets, it gets confusing. Right. Potok is the one. I got this name right. Potok is the one who made those defamatory statements about you, not Bloomberg. Let's be clear on that. Well, stay there. I'm going to come back to you. No, no. I had discussions with them about that statement. And I said, if you put that in there, you've got to put in there that one of their guys went and shot up the Family Research Council. And then, they, and they also have quotes about how I influenced the, the uh, Zarnab brothers. So don't try. No, the, the article is written to imply that I'm a terrorist. Stay there. I'll come back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back live here up on InfoWars.com. A public government training camp has upheld the suspension of a child who was eating their Pop-Tart and students thought it looked like a gun. Doesn't even look like the shape of a gun, but now, you know, if, if your Twinkie has the imprint, not of the Virgin Mary, but of the gun, you're, 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 take him away. I mean, it's just all thought crime. Everything they're doing is about authoritarianism. I want to jam in your calls now and in the next segment, and then we're going to end the main transmission uh, at Whistleblowers tonight, 7 o'clock Central, from telecom and government. So you don't want to miss that information. It's very important. WayneMadsonReport.com is our guest site. You should go there. There's a lot of news there, but also subscribe to get the deeper reports and support him. Uh, please support us by buying books, videos, the new magazine, uh, the Pro Peers, 10% off. Uh, the water filters, InfoWarsStore.com. You have a PrisonPlanet.tv membership to see the nightly news. Share it with people. All right, I want to get to all these callers before the show ends uh, here. So uh, uh, Aaron in Nevada, real fast, do you have a point for, uh, for Wayne Madsen? You want to go back? When I say Bloomberg, I mean Bloomberg, the publication, went with a hit piece. Go after Potok. Get yourself a good defamation lawyer and go after him bankrupt the Southern Poverty Law Center. You could do it. That's a defamation per se, what he said about you. He went over the line of uh, uh, that you're a public figure type of thing into defamation per se. I know. Opinion. I'm looking at it. I just, it, I, if I sue somebody, I'll have to get the right lawyer, spend the money, find, you know, do it all right to get a judgment. And, uh, I mean, it, it, and I've got to send them letters and make them retract it and, it, it, my point is, for them to do stuff like that means they're desperate. Especially when the Southern Poverty Law Center was running Elohim City where McVeigh was at. Wayne Madsen, you got any comments on that? Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, you know, suing, I, I, I had to get a thick skin after doing this for a few years. I mean, you know, let them take their best shot. You know, who cares? I mean. No, they, I hear they, you. But I, mean, but I mean, for them to that, say that I'm building bombers, that is outrageous. Yeah. That is outrageous. Yeah. I, I know, and and but the one thing they do like to do is to get you tied up in court and get. No, no, involved. I agree. Maybe that's the plan. No, I tend to not sue yeah. people. I, I you mess with my family, though. I mean, I, you know, I'll come after you. Uh, listen, I appreciate the call, Aaron. Let's talk to Harvey in Florida. You're on the air. Go ahead, Harvey. 
Hey, Alex, it's been a long time since I've spoken with you. And Wayne, you, you, you're like a wealth of knowledge. You're like an encyclopedia of history. The, Thank you. Uh, the, Car the Carlisle Group owns Booth, Booz Allen. Are you familiar with that, Alex? Yes. So once again, you see the, the, the Bush family entanglements. And I'd just like to go through a short history. It'll take me about a minute or two. I know you're short on time. We'll do it. Well, JFK gave the Secret Society speech, and Bush being in the Secret Society, next thing you know, JFK was dead. Then Bush shows up as an ambassador to China, and he gives away everything to China. He was our first ambassador to China. Was he not, Wayne? Yes, he yeah, was. Yes, he was the envoy, right. Mm -hmm. Then he shows up in, as a CIA uh, head of CIA. Then he shows up again as vice president. Then he shows up as president. Then he puts his son in as president. And the world's gone downhill for the last 50 years. Well, you know why? The Bushes were the last lawyers, Prescott, to control a bunch of hidden Nazi wealth. And that's one reason the Bushes are so important. Wayne Madsen? Well, yeah, I mean, the Bushes are evil. And, you know, what are we talking about in 2016 now? Hillary Clinton? What is this, a monarchy, a duopoly? Uh, Bush Clinton, Bush Clinton, Bush Clinton? Uh, you know, enough of this already. And, you know, and you throw in the Cuomo kid and all this. We're not that kind of country. We don't we don't have royal families here. We What's wrong with Kim Jong-un and an hereditary inbred dictatorship? Yeah. I mean, maybe they'll put them on teacups if it's, you know, 10 generations. <laughs> Caller, what was your final point on that? Alex, you have the money to bring down the Bush family and therefore everybody else. Please put your money into. The I don't have any. I, I'm show. spending all the money I've got on this radio show. I think people think I'm too powerful. I mean, I bring down the Bush family. I'll tell you, it's one thing to fight the whole new world order. If you start going after an individual family, yeah, I mean, you, you heard what the, the Bush patron said on Larry King. Remember what she said? Here's the article from 2003. We'll put it up on screen here. Barbara Bush threatens Democratic presidential candidates. It was on October 22nd, 2003. I've got the transcript there. And she said, if you mess with my family, I'll have you killed. You can go read it. I mean, the Bushes are just unbelievable. I know a lot of people that know George W. Bush, and they just say he is the nicest guy in the world. Buying you lunch, going golfing, a real night. He goes and cries with veterans and people. And, 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 uh, and I don't know what's going on with these people. I mean, I mean, they're definitely, Prescott was the top Nazi lawyer in the U.S., and he got to keep a lot of their wealth in Latin America when that when it all fell. And that's why they're so rich and why their their money's hidden. I mean, that's a fact. It's been in the London Guardian years after we broke it with guests. Uh, what's your take on the Bush and the Bushes and their their hidden power, Wayne Madsen? Well, I, I you know you look at you look at the history of this. Uh, I, you know, uh, this is a 50th anniversary of JFK being shot to death on the street of Dallas. Uh, and you know, there's there's a photograph of the school book depository of a guy that looks an awful lot like uh, CIA uh, man George H. W. Bush standing there in front of that building. I know people say, oh, it's not him, it's another guy. That's they always have these explanations. And look, you know, he he, he was only pre Ronald Reagan was only president for six weeks when John Hinckley broke through police lines and managed to put a slug into President. And Reagan. he had dinner with the Bushes yeah. the night before. Hinkley, the Hinkley, yeah, Hinkley's son and and uh, what was it? It was uh, Neil Bush uh, had had dinner. I mean, you know, there's, the, there's too many coincidences. You know, people say oh, that's a conspiracy theory. I say, well, I don't, I don't believe in coincidence. No, that's Denver Post. Uh, Bushes and Hinkley's had dinner that day before Reagan shot. That's a, that's a exactly fight. exactly. So so you know, the Bushes are absolutely evil. But, you know, as, I, as I, I wrote this book, The Manufacturing of a President, and it's quite clear that uh, Obama was deep selected, probably out of Occidental. He was talent spotted. Uh, and, uh, I mean, this guy, uh, his family was CIA. He was CIA. He worked for a CIA front company after graduating Columbia. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fight. It's just a private mafia takeover masquerading as government. Simon in Florida, real fast. Go ahead. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Yeah, um, I just wanted to talk to you real quick about uh, the copyright issue. Uh, I had the same problem myself with the American Dream. That's a movie that you can get your website. Yeah, your phone's breaking up, brother. I got to let you go. Devoted ally in USA. You're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Snowden's uh, Ron Paul inspired hero. 
also unselfishly devoting his very life to help and protect and defend our once proud U.S. Constitutional Republic. And God is standing behind heroes like Snowden. Satan's servants, of course, include so-called President, so-called Peace Prize, Banner, most prostitutes, and way too many of our brain-dead fellow so-called citizens who are lockstep dancing with the stars while the rest of us true patriots like you and me, sir, are eagerly putting everything on the line to help save our world. Never give up. All right. Thank you so much uh, for the call. Uh, real fast, Ron in New York, you're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, with regards to Ed Snowden, Ed Snowden is an American patriot, and he acted in the highest way. The fact of the matter is, all these people running around and saying he violated his oath. The oath is statutory law. Statutory law is subordinate to the constitutional law. This is not Europe or one of the nations of the old world that doesn't have a constitution. So if he felt that there was something that was going on, even if it would seem a violation of his statutory oath, that was violating the higher law, which is the United States Constitution. He was correct and, in fact, duty-bound to bring that out. That's right. If they start trying to use the NDAA to kill American citizens, which they're doing, people have a right to resist that. I don't care if they've got some fake thing Obama signed. You're not allowed to kill innocent people without due process. God bless you, Ron. Good to hear from you. Great points. Wayne Madsen, thank you so much for the time. And I want to get you on very, very soon to track all this. Thank you so much. You bet, Alex. Great job. WayneMadsonReport.com. We're InfoWars.com. Whistleblowers. Tonight, 7 o'clock Central. PrisonPlanet.tv. Be there.